So Zara. Oh. Uh, Zara's like cringing in her sleep just with the music. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's the fucking weird guy again. Yeah. Okay. Where'd I put? Where'd I put him? God damn! I have eight million handouts. Hundred, hundred trillion fucking. I actually can't find it. Are you kidding me? There's no way. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Holy crap. There he is. So, yeah. Once again, you're dreaming of, I don't know, something. You're, like, in the in the guild hall or something. And, again, this fucking guy just in the, in the background, in the distance, like, watching you. Maybe, like, outside watching through the window or something. Mm-hmm. And again, like, every time you dream, you're somewhere... The dream you have is not really, like, relevant. Like, you could be anywhere. It's just that this... This figure has been there every night. Just kind of... At a distance. Observing you while you're sleeping. Um... So Zara will, like, stop whatever it is she's doing in the dream and just try to make her way to whoever this is. If possible. Yeah, so he's outside watching through the window. As soon as you get up from the table, you wake up. <sighs> so I was like lying in bed and just be like, This is frustrating. Somebody's being coy and elusive. And it's not me for once. Looks like your party is, is a lot of them are already up, like getting ready, getting their things. <sighs> Suppose the day's not going to create itself. <sighs> She'll get up to, to get ready for the day and join them. Cool. Kind of rubbing oh, her eyes a little bit. <laughs> what level is Freya now? Four. Okay, I just have to make sure your tiger is correct. Yes, tiger is correct. That's important. Because I know there was one time when the tiger was not correct. And it's important to make sure the tiger is correct at all times. If you don't have a correct tiger, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> That's right. It's a, it's very These vital. are the steps for, for waking up. Like, get a good breakfast, make sure you put on pants, and keep your tiger correct. Keep them correct. <laughs> correct tiger. I have it posted on my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zara, as you're getting up, Zara, um... You notice that your 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 new eclipse is uh, on like your bedside table, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily where you left it. Probably it was like in your bag or just like with your things, but uh, it's like sitting on your bedside table. <sighs> I sort of like to think that Zara would use the returning property of it, like to get everything she needs, leave it right there, and then on her way out the door, like kind of reach her hand towards it, and then like break, like it, it just flies to her hand with the returning property. <laughs> that I works. I don't know if that's how it works, yeah. but it, it sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, it looks like that's not what it looks like. I don't know how you got there, but let's go. Cool. Yeah, on on your way out, a lot of people are like having breakfast. And, uh, you see Avalanche is, they're all having, like, a, a hearty meal this morning. And, uh, one of them, the, the girl, notices you coming out and goes, uh, Hey, um, Zara, right? Oh, yes, that's me. Right, uh, I, I was meaning to tell you about something, if you've got a sec. I know you guys are probably headed out. I'm sure it's, um, we're not in any hurry, I don't think. Please, speak your mind. One of the other ones is like, don't, don't fill her head with nonsense. And she's like, no, 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 no. I mean, you know where we found it. We should at least tell her that. Please, so whatever it is, the nonsense already there needs company. Go on. Uh, so anyway, Mist got, you know, kind of eaten by the dungeon. Mm, yes, quite a shame. Their eclipse was outside, though. It was, we found it stuck in a tree outside the dungeon. Hmm. Odd that they didn't take it with them. 
pretty sure they did have it with them. <laughs> and uh, another member of Avalanche is like, look, it, they probably just threw it and it went really far. This is stupid. And uh, the the big tall one in the back is like, I've, I've definitely seen it move before. And then the other one that was like, shut up, it doesn't move, it's a fucking, it's a weapon. And they start arguing. And the girl's just like, there's some, there's some weird rumors with that, you might want to, you know, I don't know, keep an eye on it. Um, obviously it's a, not directly agreed upon by, by all present parties, but uh, that, that thing's, uh, it's a little peculiar. Hmm, I see. I'll definitely keep my eye out for any trouble then. Yeah, I just thought I'd let you know. Certainly appreciate it. That's how they got it mm. when the party was Yeah, and after they dead. after they walk away, Zara would uh, will take the weapon out and sort of like like be, be eating with one hand but sort of holding it in the other. Just looking at it, you're like Well, I bet you certainly have a story to tell. Hmm. Somebody, so what's, uh, somebody's been doing some thinking for themselves. <laughs> what's Dolph doing? Uh, he's probably <laughs> having a big hearty breakfast. Oh, well, there been, you go. Sorry he hasn't been on, been on a mission in a while, so he's just kind of... Eat. He does what he... You know, first time they joined the party, he was eating, and that's what he's doing. He loves to eat. Wonderful. How about Regal? Uh, <clears throat> Regal will be upstairs tinkering around with stuff until, like, right before the party needs to go and then he'll, upstairs like, come down yeah in the rafters with the bird that he loves, Where, yeah. wherever the wherever the the room is you know. oh so your room is just off to the side it's like a little it's okay, like a little so he's, building he's in the shack and he he comes over yawns and like grabs a muffin or something he's like i'm ready in the yeah. cia underground compound or something i don't know where you think because this is your uh this is your guild hall and you guys are like here you're like in that little something over here. Yeah. So you guys have like a little shack attached. What about Freya? Freya's probably sitting up in the rafters, like up there or something. Okay. <laughs> people. Doing Freya well. is upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> there, are no, there are no stairs, though. <laughs> Snowball will be up there with you, yeah. Yeah. What's that run's obsession with climbing the rafters lately? It's so strange. Everybody I like, just wants to go upstairs. I like my feet <laughs> on the ground. Is there an underground area I, I, I could go to? Keep me cold and sane. <laughs> Alright, we're going on a quest, aren't we? Mm -hmm. You're, yeah, you guys finish up eating. You're, you're going to meet one of the Crimson Kingdom companies. A logging company that has a holding on the edge of the weald, because the you know on one side the weald borders the highlands, so they have like a little little bit of a stake mm. in it. They own like a small section of the forest where they harvest the wood for the Crimson Kingdom, because the uh, the highland doesn't exactly have a whole lot in the way of wood, and it's an important resource. I am I'm excited to hopefully meet some dwarves. I haven't seen too many of them around, but I'm sure I'll get plenty of that too when we go to the highlands. We're, we are going there, right? I believe so, yes. I believe the more adventurous in our party wanted to make sure we saw every bit of the world that we could, didn't want to skip a single region. Hey, except for the darn underwater place. <laughs> I think we can skip those experiences. Good luck convincing Eris of that. I will do my best. <laughs> yeah. The level you guys are at, you could you could technically skip the Highland because I think everyone's probably gonna be five walking out of here. But the Highland's cool and has lots of cool stuff, so probably should at least visit. Mm -hmm. Pop in. Pop in, check things out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't wanna I don't wanna miss a thing. Because I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Even with our clothes by. Alright, 
love is going to go crazy in this place. I've been doing stuff. I can't leave in three, two weeks. I just want to get out of this. Dolphin's <laughs> been quarantined for coronavirus. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've waited my 14 days. I'm fine. I told you, it's just a cough. <laughs> All right. So is it gonna head out? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. Cool. Dolphin's steps are quite uh, peppy as he's bouncing his way to the uh, the lump. I think yeah. during this time he's gonna he's gonna start just blabbering about things. And be like, oh, oh I... what's that? No, go ahead. But like so, the uh, the lumber camp is owned by the Oakenhide Logging Company. Uh, they they main, mainly handle wood and uh, other n nature related things like furs and hide. Uh, did you know that there are several such companies? I'm trying to count, eight, is it ten? One, two, three, four, six, seven. Ten to be exact. Uh, ten, ten major trade guilds that uh, just determine our, our standings and who we or our lead. Yeah, any uh, specialize in engineering? Actually, there are. Actually, there are. Yep, quite. The uh, the oil blood engineering. They're they're in charge of our technology. You might they might get along with them. Only if you don't piss them off as much as you piss me off. The dwarves can carry quite a grudge. <laughs> oh, don't I know it? I have a uh, bit of history we... with them. <laughs> We met one of them already, the God's Mask Faith. That's the one with the. I hold up my little hat. Like, that's like. I don't know. <laughs> one of their garbs. They're, they're the church. Yeah, the Crimson that? Kingdom's church is one of the companies. <laughs> <laughs> Faith Incorporated. Yeah. Uh, we got the church. We got the, the engineering. Uh, then we've got the, the wood and the, and the fur. Uh, I personally uh, come from a household from the. Uh, Sunstone Mining Company. They they mainly handle gems and uh, I did mining for them myself in one of their their gem mines. Give me a wisdom check for Dolphin. Uh -oh. did, did, did I did I mess no, anything up? No, you, you didn't mess anything up. I want to see if he'd remember like their slogan. Oh, okay. <laughs> you used to work for him. Uh, you you mess it up a little bit probably. Oh God. <laughs> 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 that you remember their their slogan. There ain't no hole where a dwarf no, no. go. It's it's something it's <laughs> something like beauty in your hand or it's I don't know. You, you, it's been so long. You haven't been there in a long time. So can't we, quite we love hands. Hands are beautiful to us. We, <laughs> we love. That. Uh, then there's uh there that was the gems. There's also just uh, metals in general. The, the gold pick. Uh, and now to defend all of our different assets, there's actually a security branch, the the Shatter Shield. Uh, and you can't have a good dwarf without a bit of ale. So there's there's the Kegheart Breweries, the best best ale around. Uh, and then there's some butcheries too. They keep us uh, dwarfs fed, as you can tell. I'm quite a fan of the old uh, the food. Uh, and and of course the smithing, uh, just the the Silver Forge Ironworks in terms of getting all the finest equipment that you can buy. Now, last but not least is the uh, Blackbeard Mining Company. Now, the only thing that they specialize in is coal, and uh, that's where our current king resides from. They're the richest house, the, the mining company. Specifically coal. Wait, so there's a mining company for just coal, and then there's one for gems and other Aye. metals? Aye. We've had uh, several disputes on a mine that had coal in it. You know, Who, whose is it? Usually it's the Blackbeard. Don't I, uh, uh, we get real heated. <laughs> yeah, there's three three mining companies, coal, metal, and gems. Basically, they just own different sections of the, of the mountain range. Like, it's split up. So, like, they tend to... They, like, specialize. So, like, it's not like the... the Blackbeard Mining Company can't mine anything else. They just mostly tend to go for coal mines. Like, they go out of their way to make sure that they own the coal mines. But if, like, there happens to be some gems or metal in, like, land that they own, it's not like they're... Cause just leave it there. I mean, they'll be like, okay, whatever, we'll mine this, too. 
but like the vast majority of what they mine is coal and then so like Dolgren the company Dolgren's family worked for the Sunstone it's it's the same but for gems they go very far out of their way to try to make sure if there's a really good gem mine is discovered they'll like jump on that to make sure it's theirs monopolies can make one very rich and powerful all right and that's yeah. why Bron the Golden King is uh, owned by uh, our king the, the Blackbird mining company the coal the coal mine Interesting. I did not did not have such a knowledge of the depths of dwarven politics. Oh, it's very very deep and and rooted, uh, and people are quite. Uh, you have generations upon generations of blackbeards, and they they, as they think any other kind of coal is better than theirs, they'll uh, they'll fight you, and they're, mm-hmm. they're stubborn. I'll make sure to not disagree just... with them on the quality. Then you can almost I think don't... of. Oh, go ahead, Bray. Oh, I was say, I think it it makes sense if you're. A country that is very motivated by money and nothing else, I suppose. Right. And ale, which is also money. Yes. Mm-hmm. If we no. if we if we ever cross paths with that uh, that smithing uh, group, I I might make myself scarce. I had a slight disagreement with them in the past on a, on an order that I had that I had commissioned. They uh, they raised the price on me, though they say that I stiffed them for it. <laughs> Oh, that's very interesting. Not the most honest of, of businessmen, but they do good work. Aye, they're still dwarves, well, they're, not, they're from a different clan, so... A dwarven on merchant is an honest merchant. You probably did stifle them. i I probably take your side. I, I would never! <laughs> Our us dwarves have each other's backs. Then I shan't push the matter further, I'll just... Keep my head down if we ever do encounter them. I it's a big company. I'm sure you won't run across the same guy again. Perhaps. So as you approach the border of the the section of land that is owned by the uh, the Oakenhide Logging Company, the difference is pretty clear. Um, you reach a section of the forest where. It's basically clear-cut, but then you can see, you can almost see the progression of where, like, new trees have been planted and are growing at different stages. So it almost creates this ramp where, like, they've just cut this section clear, and then adjacent to it, there's a huge section of trees that are maybe a few years old. And that are, you know, only like a foot or two high. And then behind that is a big section of trees that are like six feet tall, etc. And it ramps up, and it's it's segregated like in in cordoned sections in like a grid. So right away, it seems very clear just from looking at it that they've basically mapped out their whole territory, and they cut trees in like a pattern and replant as they go so that it's a sustainable system that they have set up here. Well, I was worried they were going to be focused solely on consumption and we might have to settle a political dispute between the Weald and the Dwarves, but yes, it does look like they have set up quite the sustainable practice. I'm impressed. Uh, the chop and burn tactics more so are the, like orcs or, or goblins where they don't care. Ah, uh, would be yes. good business to, uh, to piss off where you, where you sleep. <laughs> Fucking racist! What the hell are you talking about, goblins? <laughs> the non-enlightened goblins. My apologies. <laughs> Do you realize that there are no trees where most goblins are from? That's because I chopped them all down. I would suppose. <laughs> <laughs> racist son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, ladies, I think we're being watched. Yeah. So you see a, a lumberjack leaning on his axe, just kind of looking at you guys like narrow-eyed. Hmm. I yelp and dwarven. Aye! Good dwarf, it is I, Dolgren. How are you today? In uh, dwarven, he responds, Y'all here with the guild? Hey, me and my, me and my mates. Uh, Alright, he, co- he comes up to the party, and in comp, he goes, Oakenheim Logging Company, Nature's Bounty at your doorstep. All right, I'm contractually obligated to say that first. Ah, oh, what a good thing! <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, 
It's good to meet you. I think I've seen that on my cereal before. Oh. <laughs> it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance as well. We are Thunder. My name, uh, my name's Bugle. I'm one of the one of the the main loggers here. But uh, there ain't a whole lot of work to go around at the moment on account of the fact that. We've been uh, under attack, so a lot of the loggers have been repurposed to defend the uh, the the logging camp. But uh, good to see you're here. Maybe you can put an end to things. I... <sighs> are, are the shatter shields busy protecting uh, uh, queens and and royals, or do they not have any help? Hmm. To... The main man's money mancer ran the numbers and decided that the, a guild party w might solve this cheaper than employing the shatter shield. We're, uh, we get, we get, we work on a thin margin out here, so. Aye, and the shatter shield would, would charge us for travel time to get them out here from the highland and all that, so. Kind of expensive. Zara oh, yeah, will, I guess we're in the wrong line of business. Zara will mutter to Freya, like, Money Mancer, that must be some sort of economist. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah like the, the, money man. the main man around here has hired a Money Mancer from, uh, from, from the Crimson Kingdom city. Of I, I heard they can just summon gold out of thin air. He, uh, he does, he does, uh, he does her numbers. What's the numbers for us? <laughs> Makes magic happen. I think their accountant is ripping them off by inflating his title. <laughs> I, I, I we, we've gone to war against bloody trees. Tell me, how many dwarves have fallen to such terrible creatures? Oh, no, we ain't had any casualties. Casualties are expensive. We've got we got company policy to uh, fall back if things get dicey. So no one's died, but we've definitely lost some real expensive equipment. It's getting bad. Mm, Here, you should you should talk to the main man. Come on. Here, follow me. You don't have any dwarf lives to avenge? <laughs> no. Pack it up! But... Pack it up! I mean, so, so, some, of that, some of that equipment was real expensive. Yeah, but I'm more of like an avenger than a... <laughs> like property accountant. I'm, I'm so like he a... lead he leads you through the forest to to a section that's like just you know completely clear cut like a like a fresh a freshly cut section like just flat and and standing at the center of it is uh mm, this guy. Here we go. Just like armed to the teeth, big serrated blade on one shoulder. And he turns and he sees you guys coming. And uh, he puts his, his fist in his chest and goes, Hell, open hide logging company, nature's bounty at your doorstep. And. <laughs> and then the, the, the logger is like, oh, I already told him, boss. And he's like, ah, oh, excellent. Welcome to my little piece of paradise. Ah, oh, I love nature. And then a mosquito bites his head and he's like, fucking! <laughs> slams <laughs> hand on his face like, good! And he like stomps a flower. <laughs> Regal ah! walks up to him, and yeah. he's like, uh, you know, I got a thing for that, and he hands him a fly swatter that he made. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how much? Uh, this one's on the house. On the, what does that mean? How much nothing are you charging for your no, product? Nothing is free in the Dwarf Kingdom, nothing is free, Dolgren. Uh, I'm Dolgren. But Where don't forget where you got it. Ah, uh, understood. Regal. Uh, what, what company are you with? Regal company. Understood. <laughs> He's self-employed. He, uh, he, he takes the fly swatter and he's like, oh, this, is, this works quite well. Wonderful. Kind of stows it. Uh, I, I hear you have a job for us to do. That's correct. 
My name is Corbican, and I am the Oakenhide Lock Company owner. Co-owner. Anyway. <laughs> you have a majority of the stock share, right? Yes. N nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Dolgan of Group Thunder, of Clan Thunder of the Guild. Pleasure to... Clan? Just, just, just let him... It, it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> Considering all four of your different races, I imagine you're not quite a clan. Since a clan is a family. Clan, clan by law, not by... <laughs> Family's not clan in the blood, law, it's in not, the heart. Not by... That's right. I... <laughs> One of the... I almost forgot, it's Sir Dolgren. Ah, yes. <laughs> uh, sure. Anyway. Yes. We have quite a problem on our hands. Here, you need to speak with uh, Percival and I about this. Uh, Bugle, you can uh, you can just go back to your post. Bugle's like, I sir. Heads out. Now come, follow follow me, heroes. Hey, we're we're just this way. And as, as he walks, he talks. We've lost a lot of real expensive equipment over the last week or so but what's really vital is the sawmill if the sawmill falls our operations will be in dire straits we're talking a three percent increase in unemployment 2.1 percent loss in our stocks <laughs> nice yeah. deep in the red sounds though. really bad Hor horrible horrible circumstances so <laughs> goodness <laughs> We, uh, Makes me it, is, it is absolutely vital that the sawmill is protected. Percival's got something in his mind that you might be able to go make peace with these tree monsters, but between you and I, <laughs> it's my opinion that you should be stationed right here at the sawmill and wait for them. They'll come to you, you'll have the advantage. You can get ready for them, fight them on your own terms, Whereas if you go off into the woods looking for them to harbor some kind of peace, we might get attacked while you're gone, and you might get ambushed out in the woods. You don't want to be in the middle of the woods when you're fighting treons. That is the definition of a home field advantage for literal living trees. Why are they so pissed off? I have the slightest idea. We've been uh, locking this land for generations. And nothing has recently changed? Hmm. Hmm. As I understand it, business must grow. Have you expanded since you started? Well, about two years ago, we did. With written permission from the Emerald Kingdom. We purchased land from the gnomes. All the land that we log has been rightfully purchased from the gnomes. I've got contracts and deeds for everything. I, just, I guess they didn't tell the, dry, the tree ends that. Did the attacks coincide with this new acquisition? No, that was two years ago. They only just started attacking us a, a week or so ago. Hmm. I don't know what's going on. Is there a specific spot they seem to be attacking more, or are they targeting you? No, they just seem to be more active. They're, they're real pissed off. They're, they're, they're just, like, coming at us wherever. Uh, but the sawmill is the last big piece of our infrastructure left, so I have no doubt that they're going to come for it. And soon, too. There ain't much left for them to attack at this point. Do they seem to be targeting you directly or just kind of randomly rampaging? Hard to say. Uh, when we pull our dwarves out, they don't seem to pursue us, but they definitely destroy any kind of machinery or tools we leave behind. Hmm. Sounds like they are angry at you, then. I suggest that we go find them and speak with them. Yeah, well, that's what Purple wants you to do, but 
I want you here at my sawmill. I think you've got the best fighting chance if you fight him here in a fortified position. Anyway, here, here he is. And uh, you see a, a man that you're approaching, and he looks like this. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, how quaint. Adventurous. And uh, Corvigan's like, this, this is Percival, my money mancer from the capital. Ah, pleasure to meet you, money mancer. Per Percival adjusts his glasses. Uh, mm, yes, I'm sure it is a pleasure for you. <laughs> it is, that's why I said it. It's the case, your services were not cheap, so I do expect results. And we are not paying by the hour. You'll receive your usual flat fee. Of course, we prefer to make sure a job is done well rather than done quickly. Hmm, well said. Hmm, in any case, I believe the fastest way to put an end to this would be to, uh, seek out the source of these treants and, uh, either broker some manner of deal with it, or perhaps, if negotiations break down, put an end to it. And, uh, Cor Corvican says, yeah, but if they go out to the woods, they might get ambushed. And not to mention, we could get attacked while they're off looking for it. Percival goes, yes, but if they wait here, who knows how long they'll just be sitting around. And we'll have to feed them and give them board. It all adds up. Could get expensive. Have you ever had any sort of interaction with the trance before this all started? Hmm. Well, I couldn't say. I've arrived more recently. Uh, Corvican says, uh, well, uh, not really. They, um, I mean, they've, they've always been out there, but they've never been aggressive. They've never really, like, tried to talk to them or interact with them at all. They pretty much just left us alone. If you don't mind me asking, how long ago did you get here? First of all, goes, oh, I was brought in to help manage the money situation here about a month or so ago when Corkin uh, took over for his father. And how long has it been since the trees started attacking? Corvigan says, they, they started attacking us like a week or so ago. Hmm. I, I think we should stay and defend the solid middle. That's what, that's what good dwarves are good at. Standing on the ground and, and defending what... It's, but I'm not a dwarf, and I would like to go off and see them and talk to them. It may be a simple misunderstanding that we can work out. I agree with Freya, and even if it's not as simple as a simple misunderstanding, it'll give us a chance to size up our foes before we come to blows. How are you going to find three ants in a forest? That's how you're looking for a needle in a needle stick. Then it would be very easy to find one. Ah, uh, but a sentient needle in the needle's tank. Ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Money Mr. Moneymancer. My name is Percival, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got any, you got any habits? What, what do you like to do every day? What, what, what do you, what, what, what's a day in the life of the Money Mancer? Are you trying to sell him drugs? <laughs> you got any fixes? <laughs> What a bizarre personal question. I am not inclined to answer, Goblin. Why? You got something to hide? Am I being interrogated? Just I, asking a question. I think what he's saying, Regal, is his time isn't cheap. <laughs> don't, don't mind him, Money Man. He, he, he uh, causes me quite grief every day as well. Fuck you, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. I'm you don't want to answer any questions and let us help you. I get it. I said what I had to say. There are numbers that need crunching. And he's going to head back to the, the camp. Hey, you Mr. Big Guy, Muscles. Yeah, Corvican. Since he's gotten here, what does he typically do? What, what, what's, a, what's a daily routine for him? Oh, Percival. Uh, he yeah. pretty much sticks to himself. He likes to read. Um, 
he does all our finances and, and math. He doesn't really leave his his tent very often. He, he doesn't seem to very be very fond of the wilderness. A uh, man married to his work. Guys, I can't help but notice there's a little bit of a coincidence between when he's arrived and when these attacks started. I wonder if he's pissing off the trees somehow. Perhaps. That was my first thought as well, but we should go talk to them. See if we can figure this out. I agree, and that, uh, might, that might come to a quicker resolution than us standing and waiting around for a while. I'm all for bringing the fight to the trees. All right, says Corvican. But if the sawmill gets destroyed while you're gone, you may not get paid. Understandable. I can leave Snowball here and protect it in our wake. Snowball? Yeah. Tiger? Yes. <laughs> Any trees attack Snowball, you know what to do. Yes, Snowball will come get me if anything starts happening to the Snowball. He's very fast. Understood. That, that works for me. How do you usually know when the trees are attacking? Like, do they just start running in? Like, what do they look like? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, do they they're, sneak uh, in? No, they're big. They're big and they're slow and they're loud. Usually, uh, you'll know they're coming because there'll be a little ripple in your morning coffee. And when they when they march, it, it shakes the ground. They definitely will not uh, <laughs> will not show up all of a sudden, unless you're walking through the woods, and one of the, and you pass right by one of them that looks like a tree, and then and then they might uh, come down on you. But if you're out here at the sawmill, you'll definitely know they're coming. What kind of trees are here in the forest? We got some like oaks, pines, anything. Anything else to look out for? Are the, are the treants any specific kind of tree? Mm, not that I can tell. They definitely can make themselves look exactly like normal trees if they want to. Any any variety of tree in particular? Just anything? Mm, I'm not sure about the particulars of their abilities. I just know that workers have reported trees unfolding into a humanoid shape before. Would I know anything about trios from my time living in the wheel? <laughs> Would. Do you have nature? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can roll. Or I'll do a secret roll here. I get plus eight. Okay. Yeah, you're pretty sure that the treants could absolutely make themselves completely indistinguishable from any trees native to their home. So if you guys are walking through the woods and you pass one, it could definitely just unfold and get a sneak attack on you, like, right there. Oh, yeah, well, not sneak attack, but, like, they would just get a surprise round. Right. Um, whereas at the sawmill, it's like, they would have to unfold and walk at you, and you'd see them coming, like, pretty far away. So it's definitely, this is definitely a decision between if you fight them at the sawmill, you have a pretty substantial advantage in in that combat but fewer diplomatic or, options but like yeah few much fewer diplomatic options whereas if you go carve it out into the woods looking for them you might be able to find a, a diplomatic solution but you're putting yourselves at much more significant risk so uh when was the last attack and how often do they typically attack Oh, the last time that we had someone attacked by a Treant was two days ago. They don't seem to attack at any particular time of day. Um, the attack two days ago was in the morning. It was reported to me by, by a couple of my employees. They were actually just, uh, they weren't even, they weren't logging at all. We, we've shut down all our operations while this is going on. They were out there, uh, just trying to move some of the logs we already had. And, uh, a treant attacked them. Darn dirty well, treant. They had to leave. Hmm? And before that, you said that was two days ago? When was the last previous one before that? Uh... He, like, gets out a tiny little, tiny little notebook. 
and leafs through it with his pinky finger. Like, let me see here. Uh, like, like a two or three days before that, I think. Somebody was attacked. Uh, oh yeah, the caravan. We had a we had a, a caravan trying to move some product onto the road to get it to the highland, but they were attacked before they could get out of the wheel. They had to abandon the cart. Do you know where the cart's at? Is it still there? Uh, probably. It's just on, like, a path leading out of the wheel. It's still in the wheel. It didn't get very far. No further questions. Okay. Anybody else? Alright, well, good luck to you. Bring your head. Regal, uh, Regal goes up to the party and quietly is like, I'm suspicious of that money man. I had nothing to be suspicious of it. He's got quite a place in dwarf society, all the way from the capital. You, you don't find it weird that he shows up and a couple weeks later trees start attacking. Well, him showing up has also coincided with the change of management. Ah, you're looking for coincidences, uh... Uh, I, I don't think his uh, his majesty money mantra has anything to do with it. Still, the change of management might have set, uh, set events in motion that led to this. But I think we should get the other side of the story. Alright, so if we go out, there will be some sad sob story about how they chopped down their grand. And then you'll get all. Then they'll want to like kill the dwarves. We're not gonna kill any dwarves. Maybe we'll get lucky and they won't be in a talkative mood. But then we'll be in the middle of the woods with our our hammers hanging out. So right, but it would make things. Bend the sawmill. But it would make things easier. Now we're surrounded by deadly dwarf eating trees. They're oh. not gonna eat you. I could have gotten the taste of dwarf blood already. Oh, I can't wait to get. <laughs> Nice thing about being surrounded, you can attack in any direction. Freya. Yes? You know, these treants are talkative. You ever, you ever met a talkative one? So based on your nature check from earlier, most treants uh, don't speak common. Or in they fact, speak almost none of them do and they also tend to not be very intelligent they like for the most part treants tend to act on like the will of the forest they're kind of like they have like sort of like a hive mind thing going on where like most of them are not really that smart they're not mindless but they're just like you know what i mean like the the some some natural force in the forest is pissed about something and then all the treants just are kind of like an extension of that will and are just like, ah, oh, fuck that thing. Like, <laughs> so they, they don't have a whole lot of like critical thinking going on. They're just kind of like being compelled toward the the enemy of the woods for whatever fucking reason um, or whatever it is it's pissed about. There's definitely situations where treants could just be attacking anyone in their area because something has set them off. Um, the language that they speak with what little intelligence they have is I don't know what it's called in Pathfinder 2 I have to it's like the fucking nature language let me look here uh ba -ba -ba -ba. You're saying Lord of the Rings is lying that's Sylvan is it I think it's Oh, uh, it might be, it might be Sylvan. No, I should have brought yeah, Eris. Uh, yeah, plant creatures. It's Sylvan. So ah, should have so brought like Eris. Even, even when you, when you find a Treon who actually will talk, which is, you know, they typically don't, aren't super interested in having a conversation because they're just kind of being compelled to go do whatever. Um, but if you manage to get one to stop and talk to you, they're going to talk in Sylvan. As soon as we find the creatures, how are we going to even communicate with them? I say we just chop them down. Bigger, older treants. 
treons that are bigger and older tend to be smarter. The, basically, the bigger and older a treon is, the more like sentience it has, the more ability it has to like. Like some of them are even quite wise, but when you when you're dealing with a treon that big and that old, they also are substantially more powerful. Um, so Freya is not sure that if the dwarves were dealing with a treon like that the camp would probably be gone. Like, we're talking, like, level 10 plus Triant for them to be, like, as smart as a person or smarter. They have to be, like, quite old and powerful. So the these forest, are probably your... Yeah. If the forest really wanted them gone, they have the means at their disposal. Uh, if they're... I mean, you don't know that the wield has any Triants like that. Okay. What I'm saying is Freya's pretty sure the Treants that are attacking the Dwarves are probably not that smart on account of the fact that if they were smarter, they would therefore also be... Like, it's a one-to-one... -one, it's like the older a Treant is... The older and bigger a Treant is, the smarter and more powerful it is. So the fact that the camp is still here means these are probably your basic Treants that are attacking, not some kind of ancient super triant. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe maybe some dwarf like pissed in a sacred puddle and now the splinters are all up their arses and now they're just hitting, hitting the dwarf camps. It could, be any, it could be anything that set them off. Like, there's so many things that could have happened. It could have nothing to do with the dwarves or it could be something one of the dwarves did. It's definitely not impossible to fix this. If you find out what like I, like I said, they have kind of a, a little bit of a hive mind thing going on. If you find out what triggered the Treants to become aggressive all of a sudden, and it's something that you're able to fix, then you could theoretically, like, deactivate that. Like, let's say... Okay. Yeah, but, but it might not be something you can fix, and it also you might never figure out what the hell it was that set them off. So, mm -hmm. there's, yeah, a, but... there's a risk-reward thing going on there where like you might just waste your time and never figure it out how about this we'll, we'll we'll try to do the temperative measure we'll try to fix the issues maybe we'll go like pinpoint from where we're at now dwarf camp a to people reported attacked in the woods just moving logs b and then like the cart being attacked c and that'll give us like a search zone like a csi missing child search zone and then like look around there for like any kind of like evil looking things that shouldn't be there or any kind of naturistic disturbances uh, and that'll give us a chance to fix it without even having to talk to them or kill them uh, and then if we hear that the sawmill's under attack or we get attacked by them then we can give them the old fire axe if you know what I mean you know what I'm saying I know what you mean how does that sound yeah I think that's that's probably fair uh, we definitely need a, a plan if we're going to try to search for anything that seems like as good a plan as any I would agree I wonder if Triant wood is more valuable than regular wood why, why would that matter you think the money, the, the money man would Prioritize the treant wood for for its value. I, I would assume it wood is wood. Perhaps, but from a living creature, there might be some properties about it we don't know that More might give flexibility. it might give it value enough to make it worth sacrificing some equipment to have an excuse to hire a guild of adventurers to go hunt them for you, so that they can then come and gather what's left behind. Uh, all right, Tiger Lady. I say you. Uh, we'll we'll try to just a thought. Search around and, and look for things, and we'll see uh, if we find anything. I say we start with the camp at least. I look around for signs of disturbances and kind of expand our search area. I think the search area is a good idea. Good place to start. Okay. So, what's your first? destination are you going to hit the sawmill where they're all set up that's basically the center of their operations or are you going to like cut into the woods or what, where are we going are we going to the site of one of the attacks i'd like to go... start in the middle and then work our way out 
That's fine. I was gonna say we could just go right to one of the attacks. That's what I wanted to check out, but we can start with the camp. Okay. Cool. Oh wait. Oh, we can ask around to so some some workers who might be willing to tell us a little more than the owners. Cool. See if we can get one of them to confess who drank nature's oatmeal. Nature's oatmeal? What the hell is that? I don't know. <laughs> Just something that made it upset. Drank nature's milk from a carton. Not the oak milk. <laughs> right delicious. So you guys uh, find your way to the sawmill. It's pretty hard to miss. Uh, it's it's very like it really stands out here in this um, in, in the wield where where like the architecture is totally unique. Uh, it doesn't look like anything from the capital either. It's clear they built most of it out of wood, probably because as the Oakenhide logging company, they have an abundance of wood. So it was cheaper to build with that material than to have stone like brought in from the highland. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's definitely some stuff going on here that's super unique. First of all, these uh, wooden path, these wooden like bridges, have metal rails and like all these packages up here and all all that are in like carts chained together on these rails. And uh, any of any of your characters who've never been to the Crimson Kingdom wouldn't recognize that technology, but the Crimson Kingdom actually has, like, they use minecarts and rails, and, and they even have, like, some very rudimentary steam engines operational. Mm. Um, you don't see one of those here, but it's clear that, like, they use the, the some kind of a rail system to get their stuff around. Um, and as soon as you... you like head up there and go in the the interior is also quite unique compared to other places you've been there's a lot of like oil lamps and uh there's like a mechanical lift system to go up through the floors like they have they have a basically a, a very rudimentary elevator like with like stones on ropes and pulleys and stuff like that like that sort of lift system so there's the, the Dwarven culture in Overworld is um, technologically a step ahead of medieval. They're, they're definitely not like, you know, what the stuff they have is still built with the materials available in this day and age, but they have a lot of uh, mechanical inventions that have been kind of integrated into the uh, the architecture in a way that gives it a, a very different feel from the rest of the wield or even the capital. Like, even the noble houses in the capital didn't have elevators. But here, this, this sawmill has an elevator, so it's like the difference in technical progress is obvious immediately. Which, when I say elevator, I'm not talking about like a modern elevator, you know, it's like a fucking lift. Pulley. Right. Just... Yeah. But it's still like even the noble house, even like a big noble mansion in the capital didn't have that. So it's, yeah. And like the castle was just all stairs. So. Why is inventive? We go yeah, like, they... interesting. He like takes notes. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Crimson Kingdom is very, very ahead of their time with stuff like that. Never wriggled. They're quite stringent on their patents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't, don't steal their patents. So as we're we're walking around, looking around this place, is there anything that that looks like newer, like maybe recently added to any of like the the machinery or anything like that? Well, you're you're kind of looking around. And no, it, a lot of it looks very well used. This is stuff that's like been here for a good, like a good long time. And uh, while you're walking around, you see your your buddy Bugle has come home, and he's uh, 
He's like in what looks like sort of a, a mess hall with a bunch of other dwarven workers, and they're uh, they're getting ready to enjoy lunch. So the the it looks like you've got a huge amount of the workforce in here for lunchtime, like all in one place, which could be pretty convenient if you wanted to do any kind of questioning or get some information from the employees. They're like all here and they're gonna be here for a while eating. I say we should interrogate any of the employees on any wrong wrongdoings to me. Interrogate? That never gets anywhere. What do you suggest then? Have a conversation. Alright, we'll have a conversation with uh, these friendly door. Make them make him feel like they're leading the conversation. You know what I'm saying? Make them feel like they're in charge. We're when really did you become such an expert one. on social commentary, <laughs> commentary interaction? He's hung around me a lot. I've been a shopkeeper for half my life. I mean, uh, I've got to know people at least a little bit. I, if you say so. <laughs> Alrighty. So you've got all the employees, and then there's also the, like the chef that runs this this place. So he he would be like the equivalent of the barkeep for for the oh. local camp, basically. Barkeep, he knows all the good good things. I think we should approach the barkeep, aka the cook. I'm sure they'll be receptive to you more so than any of us. I don't know, you're such an expert on dwarf conversations, and maybe you should do all the talk. <laughs> you sound like an idiot. <laughs> you really grind my gears. Do they, do they serve goblin at lunch? <laughs> That's better one here. <laughs> you're got, here. got away here. from the cage. Alright. <laughs> Alright, so you, you, you head over to the counter. And you see this guy behind Look the counter. This lovely man. Oh man! Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll have what he's having. <laughs> so as soon as he sees you guys, he walks up to the counter and he goes, "Wild boar butcheries. Take the meat." <laughs> uh, yes, please. Nice to meet you. My name's Chicken. I'm, uh, I'm a chef working working here, feeding this this big old workforce. It takes a lot of work to feed this many dwarven workers. But I ain't never seen any of you here. I assume you're not uh, loggers. You don't look the type. Nay, we're, we're from the guild. We're, we're investigators, and careful, your, your soup is sp spilling and slow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Sometimes, uh, my bulging muscles make it hard to hold things. <laughs> I, I, I see that. Who knew that a chef would get quite as rough as you? Uh, well, you know. It's, uh, being a, being a good butcher and a good chef, you gotta stay fit. It's a lot of physical work back here. I, I bet you've got legs like an elf, though. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know about that. So can I get you boys something to eat? I I have some food. Oh, what you want? I got uh, cow, chicken. We got a goat back here. I have not had a goat in so long. I would love a, a nice goat. Goat it is. He 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 heads out of you, and you hear uh, like. Ah, <laughs> uh, fresh goat! I miss me at home. <laughs> he comes out Hopefully with a goat. it was a baby, they taste the best. So. He comes out with a goat carcass and lays it on the counter in front of you, and, and just in front of your party, he just starts skinning, just like just skinning the goat carcass while he's talking to you guys. That's so uh, while I'm getting this goat ready, what, do you guys have questions for me, or any of you all? Anyone not in the mood for goat? Anyone want something else? 
some goat would be lovely. And he, Freya's like admiring the way he's skinning the goat. Like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's, he knows what he's doing with his big fucking butcher cleaver. One one of the employees at the table is like, yo, you, you getting a fresh goat? Hook me up. And he goes, yeah, there's plenty for all y'all. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do have a couple of questions. Uh... My, my friends here want to figure out what exactly caused nature to get to its, uh, its binds in a, in a, in a twist. Uh, have you ever heard of uh, anyone talking about uh, maybe finding something they shouldn't have? Uh, upset ancient burial grounds, nature to grottoes. Mm. Does any kind of employees get it adventurous and leave the, the three farm and on a break or vacation and, you know, upset nature and talk about uh. what they did? Any other uh, company boy, changes? The, the boys definitely get bored. So, uh, yeah, I mean, people wander around the woods sometimes looking for adventure. One of the employees come up, comes up and, and he just, like, quietly is like, wild boar butcheries, taste the meat, and hands him a refill, and goes right back to talking to you. <laughs> so, uh... I <laughs> have in the brew. <laughs> you gotta say the slogan. It's like they're greeting. So, uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, well, I, I ain't heard any of them bragging about finding anything or, or anything like that. Um, I will say, uh, the whole forest seems to be in a little bit of a tizzy. Um, it seems to me like, uh, it's not just the treants, but like all kinds of, all kinds of creatures in the wheel, they're kind of ants right now. Like, they've been that way for a while. Like, something, something's happening. You know, uh. I was uh, I was serving some food in the Emerald Kingdom a few weeks ago, like before all this Treon business even happens. Sometimes I'll I'll head over there and uh, you know serve serve some stuff for them. And uh, the gnomes don't have they don't have any meat, so uh, I'm pretty popular when I show up with with the ones who are into that. You know, <laughs> it's a niche market in the Emerald Kingdom. A lot Kingdom. of vegetarian the, gnomes. Yeah. Yeah, but the ones who aren't vegetarian are pretty excited to see me because there's no, it's pretty hard to get meat over there. So, but anyway, um, point is, I was over there a few weeks ago before this tramp business even started, and a lot of the gnomes were talking about how there's uh, some some kind of thing out in the woods that's like created this big old scary fucking maze. And the result is that, like, all of the natural creatures that used to live there have been forced out of their natural habitat. So the, the, the whole forest is in, like, chaos right now because that that thing is, like, scaring everything away. Hmm. Sounds like the dungeon. I've heard of such a thing. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah, so I don't, know, I don't know if it's related. I just know it seems like the whole forest is on edge right now, and a lot of the creatures that live here are being forced out of their homes because of that. It's like a cascading effect, right? You know, if you if you uh, move in somewhere and build a house, and there were wolves living there, well, now the wolves have to move, so they go somewhere else. And where they went, there there used to be rabbits, but now the rabbits have to leave because there's wolves there now. So then the rabbits fucking go somewhere else. It's it's like a domino kind of thing. Like as soon as you you know, natural habitat ecosystem. As soon as you fuck up one part, it like messes the whole thing up, right? Like it cascades down. They might be, uh, like a. They might be connected, but we might uh, have cascade to... like a good good cask of eight. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, the dungeon and the treant activity might be connected, but I think we should work under the assumption that they're not for now. So uh, if you guys want other if, solutions. if you want a drink, we we got a we're stocked up. We got four barrels of keg heart ale back here. It's good shit. Ah, that's some of that. I've been a while since I've had a keg heart. Nice. Been yeah. a while three minutes. It's been a while since I've been back home. So he 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 throws the the. He, he's finished cutting up the goat, and he, he throws it all in the oven, and then uh, grabs some some mugs, and he pours you guys four f giant frothy mugs of Kegheart brand ale. 
puts it on the table. He says, I don't have to say the slogan because I'm not part of Kegart. We just bought the <laughs> barrels from him. <laughs> the guy we bought the barrels from had to say their slogan when we bought it. <laughs> what, what is their, their slogan, by the way? I'm curious. I remember. That would be <laughs> advertising for a, for a competing company. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna advertise for another company. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I don't. I don't know how to help out their riches other than we skip the quest and just wait till the dungeon team is done with it, and then bam, our quest. <laughs> We're part of the dungeon team. Oh, we are. Everyone is. Oh, we better go get to work then. Let's head to the dungeon. <laughs> Again, I our think we should complete. For now, operate under the assumption that they're not connected and see if there's another reason why the Treyons might be acting up. Because all of a sudden, the, the ale in all your mugs, like, jumps a little bit. Like, Jurassic Park, like, there's uh -oh. a little bump and then rings in your ale mug. Uh -oh. oh, lovely. <laughs> are those... Oh, please tell me, are like a box fella that it wasn't until dastardly three. And then it happens again. I and think we Jigen should is outside. like, oh shit, I think they're coming, man. Well, yeah, is we gonna real quick, like, here. chug her ale. <laughs> you chug the <laughs> ale! I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna grab the cup and say, oh, it's just a go cup. <laughs> I'm <not> gonna... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Regal uh, shuffles around in his in his pack and hands Freya a Quicksilver potion. And Zara, you want. Zara will sort of pat the top of her, of her ale mug and say, like, I'll be back for this. I am. Don't burn the lamb, I'll be back for it. So I'm guessing we're making our way out there then. Yeah, see if we can figure out where the something is As coming they're walking from. out, Freya's gonna like whisper to uh, Regal and be like, is this something I drink now or like later? It'll last you ten minutes. Okay. You, you decide when that's the best time to use it. And he's gonna okay. pull out his own and get ready to drink it. So I'll drink it as soon as I see any treants that look hostile. So you you guys feel the ground shaking, but you're not really sure how far away they are. Apparently they're big and they're slow. So it seems like you have ample time to kind of assemble your defense of the sawmill how you see fit. You don't really know what direction they're coming from. There isn't really any way to tell. But your your goal is the protection of this sawmill. So, like, if the sawmill gets busted, you don't get paid. The quest has failed. So. What constitutes the sawmill? Like, this machinery right here? Basically, uh, yeah. The, this, this whole apparatus, Structure honestly. that we're on. The whole, this whole fucking structure that you're on, yeah. Like, if they, I mean, obviously, if they just fuck up the floorboards a bit, it's whatever. They can fix that. But if they just, like come through and yeah they just rip this thing up and like fuck it all up note that this thing over here with the pipe that seems to be a type of furnace that powers it like it's this is a steam powered sawmill so this thing with the exhaust pipe over here is very important basically here's here's what's super important let me go ahead and like uh here's what's no quit that here's what's actually important that because it's the machine and, like, the the thing that powers it. I feel like we should hunker down, at least on the east side of the camp, then, in case they... Because if they come from, like, the, the water way down here or, like, way to the west, we can react to them. But if we're over to the west and then they, like, pop up, you know, from the map, bow, right five feet away from the furnace. Mm -hmm. Can Freya use her sensitive elf ears and her... Hearing oh, to yeah, figure maybe. out which direction how, they're coming from. And how Let far? Me give you a shot at that. How far can you reasonably shoot that bow, Freya? Oh, uh, <coughs> how far can so, I shoot that so bow? So, Freya, with your with your elf ears, you're pretty damn sure that they are. How you rolled, I'll tell you. You're pretty sure they are not coming from that way. They're not coming from behind you. But they, they for, for, for as far as you could tell, they could be coming from anywhere from here all the way around to... There's like 180 degrees that they could be coming from. But How they're, high not, up are they're these... not coming from the back. How high up are these log piles? 
The log piles are tall enough that if you're right in front of one, you could use it as cover, like with the take cover action. I would say they're probably like maybe shoulder height. So you could you could like duck behind one and be fully covered. Or maybe we should use some like chest high cover and, and then uh But the thing that you're this this thing on is raised too. This this logging platform you're on is is honestly even taller than the log piles. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, maybe Freya could stay up here. I feel like uh, Regal's think, not gonna want to. I think look. Freya's somewhere like central, like here, where she can attack from any direction and be high enough to actually see from any approach, depending on how far she can shoot. Pretty sure the bow has got like at least a hundred. This is a cool map, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you like it? Let me see if I can find it. Hey, just let him come and I'll chop him down. Who needs Fred? I ain't no scared of big trees. So yeah, uh, I guess put your put your characters where you want to be. Yeah. Right, so I'm taking cover behind this wood stock stack. Yeah. So I feel like the longbow is really far. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a hundred. It's a hundred feet. Mhm. Mm okay, so it's really really far. It's this map is actually big enough that there could be something out of your range, but not for long. Yeah. There's not very much of the map that would be Yeah, I think range. keeping Freya in a central location like right here would be or even lower than that, but yeah. Regal has much shorter range, like 30. Uh, yeah. With the gun, I think it's 60. Yeah, this gun is 60. We've got a throw range of 20 feet. Yep. It's a cool, it, it is a really cool map. I'm mm -hmm. excited to use this map, yeah. I've, I've loaded my gun, by the Dogren, way. Dogren, you feel good where you are? I ain't never better. Alright. And as soon as I see a Treon's, like, come into view, I'm gonna drink that potion. Cool. The potion is going down. Is your gun fully loaded? Yep. Isn't it, like, I think you can... Four, four shots. For two. Okay, so two bombs are loaded into it for four shots. Cool. A second. Yeah, because you can put up to two into it, if I'm not mistaken. So. Alright. My shots with that. Yeah. Alright, ready to go here? Yeah, and Zara will kind of tuck her, her arm into, into her, uh, her cloak and just sort of have a, like just a finger or two on Eclipse ready to ready to draw it at a moment's notice. Cool. So, uh, yes. You see two of them appear. Uh, they like emerge from the the foliage right here, and then up here. Mm -hmm. So top right, top left corner, and then bottom left forest. Y'all see them? Yep. Yep. I see them. Okay. Let's get some in initiative. I'm gonna fight some fucking treants. So just a couple. Just a couple of them. Mm -hmm. God, this is a big ass map. Yeah. <laughs> it's really big. I'm still drinking my ale. <laughs> Got a little distracted when the trees roll up. Well, Zan, a, question, a question about my nimble dodge. Do I use it before or after I see the attack roll? Uh, I'm gonna read it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's in my, it's in my feed. I, I mean, I, I don't have... Uh... I don't have everything memorized yeah, verbatim. What? Like you don't have everything memorized verbatim? I'm gonna go read it. Uh, a creature targets you with an attack. So it happens before the attack's rolled. Okay. Because the trigger is when they target you with an attack. Right. I didn't know if it was gonna be like defensive duelist or not. Okay, cool. Uh, defensive duelist says... Because I, I have to read... It's 
Yeah, I mean, maybe they both. That was in 5e. What? Defensive duels was 5e. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. No, it, it actually says on the feed it's triggered when you're targeted. Okay, cool. So you're targeted before any before like it actually occurs. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, Zara, you guys uh, definitely beat their initiative. Only, only the dwarf is slow. I gotta try this ale. It's really good. <laughs> okay, how Maybe... high up is this building? What's the drop here? Oh, uh, I would say the drop there is probably ten feet, but there's bushes at the bottom, so you okay. could you could drop into the bushes without getting hurt or anything. Pretty right. easily. Does that cost any movement to drop down or just move straight out? No. Down? Yeah, no, you would just drop. It's fine. Okay, so there's 25. Uh, and... 25. Actually, I'll just sort of... I'll sort of, like, hide right here. Cool. Yeah, you can actually give me a stealth check if you'd like. Cool. Uh... Because it's tall, it's apparently the pile is tall enough to conceal. Yeah, and I could have gotten there with my uh, with two moves. So let's see. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah, there you go. Cool. All right. Freya. Music. I am going to. I think this will be closer if I remember right. I'm going to mark this one as prey, and then what's my range penalty? It's like minus two. I think so. I was just trying to look up range penalties. I think it's. I don't know if it's minus two or minus one. Cause I know it's minus. It's minus two if they're too close to you. Yeah. But I don't know. If, um, give me a sec, I'm looking for the rules. Here we go. If you're attacking beyond the range increment, you take a minus two penalty for each additional beyond the first. Got it. So it's just a minus two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because that just counterbalances the Quicksilver. Mm hmm So I'll just go ahead and attack this guy. Did you do the health for your Quicksilver yet? Oh, I did not. Okay. It's, uh, you lose max HP equal to your level. I forgot to do that, too. Yeah. So just in your max health, you can do, like, a minus item, item bonus. bonus. Item bonus of minus four. So those absolutely both hit. Wait. Let me see. Yeah, they both hit. I have to do math, though. You didn't include any penalties with your roll, right? Uh, no, but the first one is just as is, because I didn't add the plus two for the Oh, Quicksilver. you. Oh, I see. So the Quicksilver balances out. So then the 30 is 25. So both hit. I'm just trying to get my health right. There we go. Yeah. Damage. Did you just put minus four in the item bonus? Yeah, I did. Makes sense. Cool, cool, cool. And then you said both of them hit? They both they both hit, yes. Ooh, nice. Okay. Wow, good roll. Well, these guys have a plethora of stuff, so let's see here. Um, those are the two hits. He is going to raise one of his arms in front of himself, uh, like big old fucking log arm. It acts as a sh as a shield. Oh wow! So he's doing like a shield block reaction with his his log arm, which is going to reduce the damage by <laughs> three. Okay. <laughs> the, that was your was that your double shot ability? Yeah, that was my double shot. So, so they're. 
So they're combined for the purpose of resistance, which is good, because they resist piercing a bit. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be 13 plus 3 is 16. She has the amorphous weapon, four. though. That ignores resistance to precision and critical Oh, damage. dang, okay. Not resistance to <laughs> Sorry, my bad. piercing. Yeah. So 16 and 16 is 32. 32 and then minus his 3 for his shield becomes 29. And then minus his resistance becomes something I'm not going to tell you. So, Oops, <laughs> okay, that does break his shield. So your sword shatters the the bark like and My wood sword? on his arm. No, your arrow. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me right now. Oh, you're fine. I, I'm dealing with a complex character sheet of abilities and resistances right now. Okay. So you, you fire two shots, one of your arrows sticks into his uh, arm shield, the other arrow hits it and it shatters. So he no longer has his shield anymore. I gotta give him like a broken, there, like a broken shield. And the damage he took is correct. So there we go. Alright, was that, I guess you have an action left. Yeah, let me, um, let me see if... Kitty cat? Kitty Cat's got 40 foot speed, doesn't he? Yeah. He uh, can actually get to it. Mm-hmm. He could. He he'd, be, he'd be solo with it. Yeah, which I don't want. Uh, I'll order Snowball. Let me see. I'll order Snowball to go, uh, to, like, go stand in between them. Got right it. There or something. Sounds good. Legal. Can I just delay my turn until they go? You can. Yep. All right. So. So he goes to right there, and then he, uh, he's gonna try and, yeah. So he climbs up onto the sawmill. Uh-oh. Yeah. All right, now for this guy. He gets right there. And uh, he, you you can uh, you can stay hidden because he actually doesn't notice you at all. Okay. So he's like not aware of you, right now. Wait. Um, and then he's got a he's got a move left, so he'll just go to here and be right there, like below the sawmill. All right, Regal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, God, I don't want to be the one stopping this thing from getting to the sawmill, but I feel like somebody's got to do it. I get the top one, Yuko, but you got to get the bottom one. Jesus. Yeah, that's actually up on the thing now. It climbed up. And they do seem to be going for the machinery, like... It seems like they are, they are here to destroy the sawmill. Super. Um... try to put myself between it and the machinery, I suppose. Like, God damn it, what I'll do for our money's pay, or our day's <laughs> pay. <laughs> uh, he's, as he runs up there, he, he's got his a bomb pulled out in one hand and his alchemy gun in the other, and he's gonna he's gonna chuck the bomb and then and then shoot his gun. Okay. Uh, so, here's the bomb first. Uh, 19. So that misses. Okay. Uh, he 
he still takes the splash damage, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, so how much was that again? Let's see here. That was four splash damage. Okay, so he takes 14 because they have weakness 10 to fire. Ooh, wow. damn. Okay. 15 right. on a miss. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the bomb like lands nearby and lights his fucking leg on fire and <laughs> lights up the fucking tree. Oh, like... my leg. <laughs> and Rachel's like, he like looks at his gun and he's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he just like unleashes like a flame around the thing. Uh, gun is clogged with pigeon shit and backfires in his face. <laughs> <laughs> 23. Oh no, I didn't. It's I didn't minus five. So, Five, yeah. Oh, so, so it actually misses, yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> hey, dog. Hey, get back here, you walking in table. You gotta answer to me first. <laughs> gonna... Walking in table. And I'm gonna go into a rage and try to hit the dude with Mac. Get him. Oh! oh! Don't okay. come back. <laughs> so that's uh, 34 slash again. 8 fire. Do I double that? Yeah, maybe. Yes. No, it's not a roll. I could be a. The fire okay. doubles, right? I think it does. Okay. We have in the past, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so that's 34 slashing and 8 fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, let me, let me oh. do the math. Do the math. Okay, so. Let me see here. So 30, 34 plus 8 fire plus yep. ten, 10 fire we weakness plus uh, 5 weakness to axes. <laughs> what? Does it really what? have axes? Yeah, they have weakness to axes. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> this is, <laughs> yeah, this is Dolgren's quest here. <laughs> so actually, it, does not, it doesn't, it doesn't oh. one shot him. That, that puts him all the way down to there, yeah. Ooh. He took he took fifteen extra from his weaknesses. Hey, that's my turn. That is really funny. They do <laughs> literally have axe weakness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I'm yeah, not even yeah, kidding. That's Pretty amazing. Specialization. So if there was another tree next to him, then he would have also taken some them. Damn. Wait. 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 Axe vulnerability. What? Hold on. This is something. This is different. This is he doesn't have weakness. He has vulnerability. I need to read what this means. Sorry, give me a sec. No problem. I thought it's weakness five to axes, but it's actually something else. It's like a specific fucking thing. Okay, let me see here. Um. Ugh. My eye. What in the hell is axe vulnerability? <laughs> what is that? I'm going to look it up because what if it pulls up the tree stats? It could be no, don't look it up. It could do it could be any number of things though. Like this I think so... that's triple damage from dwarf axes. I'm wondering if it's some kind of special thing, like something special happens when Okay. It doesn't say under its entry, it's just like a random thing it has. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Google, like, PF2 Axe Vulnerability. Got it. Ah. I found it. It is five additional damage. Okay. <sighs> Why was that worded weird? It was just worded fucking weird, mm. man. They literally, like, it's called Axe Vulnerability, and then when I finally found it, it went Axe Vulnerability. This creature takes five more damage from axes. <laughs> like, fuck off with that shit. I guess it's because axe isn't a type of damage, so they couldn't put, like... Right, five. Weapon, yeah. They can put like fire five, but they can't put like axe five. So they had to make it ability, basically. Okay, whatever. 
Zara. So like, looking through my arsenal of, of small weapons, like darn, I don't have any any throwing axes. Oh well. Yeah, um, like a hatchet or something. Yeah. Uh, so she will run out from her uh, her hiding spot. Oop, not to there, to here. Um, All right. And actually, I don't even need to move that that far. Hang on, I can't. No, I can't. No, I do need to move. I may as well move into melee so I can use my feint on him later on. Um, I guess I'll do a feint first and then uh, throw a clips at him. Cool. So, feint. That's a will DC? Uh, I, think, I think it's against his perception. His perception DC? I think. Let okay. Me... Uh, you pass, but it's a normal pass. So he's flat-footed. Wow. Wow. That hits? This many. Okay. I'm doing that slashing damage. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't resist slashing, so... There we go. Nice. All right, Freya. Uh, We've got this one. <laughs> yeah, Freya is going to. I guess first she'll order. Oh, didn't press anything. There we go. Yeah. You can get there. I'm going to order Snowball to attack this one. Got it. Snowball runs and leaps. Majestically. Uh, I mean, maybe. Let's see here. Regal, it's your savior. The tiger. Time seems to slow down as he leaps through the air. Fur <laughs> blowing in the breeze. Yeah, he makes it. There was a possibility <laughs> of your tiger face planting the tiger. Oh. <laughs> but it, he, he makes it. Good. That's a good boy. Goes for that bite. Ha! No, no, no. <laughs> uh, well, he double moved. Oh, I guess he did. Didn't he I? double moved and, and then Pounce gave him an attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, your two oh. remaining actions. Alright, I'm going to just use my double shot. Which cool. is now actually plus two. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. And then, uh... Minus three. Instead of minus five. Yeah! That, that hits. hits. Alright, nice. There we go. And then I'll just, uh, I guess I'll attack again, yeah. Okay. At minus, ah. Math. Eight, eight. minus eight, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh god. <laughs> oh. All right, this one is uh, a little annoyed because there's stuff in the way of it. So it is going to attack. Okay. Um Regal. This this fellow has reach. And he reaches over and uh just basically holds an arm over you that's like a log and just Brings it straight down. Ah, shit! Watch out for that, Mario. Ooh! Oh, that's not a crit. For 18. Ooh. Ow. Well, if it had been a crit, it would have been quite bad. Oh, what and else you got? His second attack will be against the tiger. Uh oh, not the tigre. Minus 5 is 19 and misses the tiger. So he misses the tiger, 
And then with his last attack, he actually just smashes his arm into the into like the, the cart next to you guys just deeply denting the side of it and causing it to like fall onto its side off the rails uh, is that with the minus 10 on it what do you mean that uh, this is damage oh he's attacking damage. a mine cart he sorry can't, a cart yeah. can't miss it's a cart I, I didn't even attack roll my bad I thought it was an yeah. attack roll too yeah. Yeah. no I did I didn't even roll an attack yeah. I just had alright alright gotcha just, he just did damage to the sawmill, but it, fortunately not like a vital part of it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so he just fucked up the cart over there. Nice, not bad. This guy, uh, turns on you. Ah! First attack will be on... Eh, we're gonna do Dahlgren for sure. Uh, that hits? For 17. Okay, minus nine. Ah. Alrighty. Then he, uh, he climbs his way back up here. No up escape. On. I'm here. Hello. Yeah, so you're at the bottom, though. I am. <laughs> <laughs> then he'll he'll actually just attack you again, because he has 10-foot reach. Hey, that's so, a... Like, as you're following him, he'll just fucking swing his arm behind himself. So, 25 with the minus 5. Yeah. So, 15 more. Regal. <clears throat> Alright, Regal uh, readies his gun and just unloads on this dude. How many, okay. how many shots it takes to put him down. So there's... 20? Hit. Oh, thank God. Uh, four... What's the additional three? Three, four... Why is there additional three? Probably that shouldn't be there. Well, I know how much damage it should do exactly. Yeah. It's it should be three d four for a greater bomb. Wait, do you have a moderate bomb or a greater bomb? I have a moderate bomb. So it should be two d four. Are you sure? I don't know. Two d four. I thought. Hold on. Let me look at the. No, it's two d four. It's three d four for a greater bomb. Forty four for major. Yeah, man. Right. Well, it's uh, 2d4, so... so the two fours. Yeah, you rolled two fours, so it's eight, eight fire. Alrighty, so it takes eight fire damage. So 18, then. There we go. I don't know where this additional three is coming from. Just no, it's delete not in it. Sheet. It's not oh. in the sheet anywhere. Really? Hmm. Oh, that's fucked. Let me go look. It's a, it seems no, like it it's is. It's an additional damage, man. There, I got rid of it. It was totally an additional damage. It's gone now. I, it's been deleted. Huh. It was absolutely there. All right, go I ahead. Where I came from? But okay. All right. So attack number two. Four minus three. Uh, Twenty-three. That hits. For eight fire damage. Did you roll two fours again? <laughs> yeah, I sure did. <laughs> wow. It collapses in a that burning means. heap. <laughs> uh, I hope you imagine that thing just climbed up there and then you just like. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> uh. I will I will allow my party to handle the other one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll end my turn there. <laughs> All right, Dolgren. It's ten I, feet up. I got it for you. Can I climb this thing? Yeah. Give me an athletics check. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Easy. Uh, I I'm coming for you. Here's Max. 
This is my admission to the lumber mill. Oh. Hope you enjoy Damn. it. Damn. Is that another crit? My goodness. Yeah, you kill the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Pesky things? Did they hurt the sawmill? <laughs> I'm like running back over here with my other movement. Is the sawmill up? Eh, I got the cart a little bit, but other than that, it seems alright. Alright, well, if you think about it, we can just kind of roll the trees over and put them through the mill and just like. <laughs> You don't have to like carry it around, you just roll it over, shred it up. I don't want to do it ourselves, I want to see what the dwarves do with them. I'll probably eat them. Alright, well, once you guys are uh, are done fighting the uh, the tree aunts, after, after a delay to make sure things are okay, uh, you see some of the employees poke their heads out. And the, the oak and hide owner, Corvican, comes out. Says, Do you guys know the drill? And he, he heads over to your party and is like, uh, thank you. Yeah. I see there's a little bit of damage to the cart, but that we got plenty of those. That's that's easily repaired. Meanwhile the, the employees kind of take the treant bodies, which are both charred heavily. You, like, <laughs> them them up. And they uh, they kind of drag them out to the like to the tree line and just sort of put them in the tree line like out of their out of their territory and then come back like we don't we we don't we don't, uh, we don't mess with that anything that you in any tree that gets up and walks around and attacks people I ain't gonna make it into a box. One day you'll wake up and eat someone's grandma. Like, I ain't messing with that. Oh, <laughs> that's, like that's, how you get, that's how you get mimics. Make, make stuff out of living wood. That's how you get mimics. Yeah, it seems like a waste to me. I would have loved to make that thing an into. No, it's too much of a risk. I mean, there's some kind of magical forest creature. I, my customers expect consistency and safety from our products. We have a standard. I ain't going to cut corners and... and give someone lumber that used to be some kind of monster. Who knows what that'll do. Of course, understandable. That actually sets my mind at ease a little. Yeah, we kind of just put, we leave their bodies in the woods. We figure they'll rejoin the natural cycle or some such. I'm sure a gnome would say some garbage like that. I don't know. Hey, what are we... Anywho, you, you see uh, you see what kind of a danger they pose. If you guys weren't here, they might have really wrecked things up. And that was only two of them. I mean, it, you know, you, you made short work of them, but imagine if there'd been no one here. They would have just walked right up and just bashed the hell out of all of our precious machinery. And we'd be out of business. There are usually only two of them, or there are more. Uh, I think the, that's the first time they've ever attacked the sawmill. I think uh, I think they might have been maybe not necessarily scouts. That's probably giving them too much credit, but I feel like they just kind of stumbled upon it. That wasn't a proper attack. We could probably expect a, quite a bit more of them later on today or tonight. Perhaps we shouldn't uh, stray far. Although they I mean, seem to what, that, announce their, that, they announce their that's plan. What I, that's what I've been saying all this time. I mean, it, my sawmill is, is the the this is the lifeblood of my company. It, I've been this sawmill has been passed down through generations for the last like eight generations of my family. I I don't want to see it busted up by some treons. That's why I hired you. Well, my my worry though is if this is the forest exerting its will, uh, then just taking down some treants isn't going to stop it. It's going to require a longer term solution. Well, we've never taken any of them down. And admittedly, a lot of my employees have uh, reported some pretty distinguishable features on some of them. I know that three different attacks had a treant with, uh, with this big it's that guy right there, actually. He's one of the guys you guys burned up. Like, he is, is this big cut. He shows you, like, a big cut in the front of the treant. That was put there by one of my boy's axes. So it's, it's, 
there aren't infinite treons. There seem to be a set of treons that are causing problems. And we've never taken one down before, so, you know, this is the first time they've gone down. It, it might be a, a, you might be able to just deal with them until they run out. I don't know. I don't know how many there are. I, I kind of see them as pests, honestly. I mean, they're not really that, they're not exactly smart. They ain't coming to, to talk to us. They're just like, like, what would you do if you had, like, rats in your home? You'd just get rid of them. Like, they're just a, they're just a problem. Sar so kind of like glances to Regal, trying to imagine what he would do if he if he had rats. And shudders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're 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 just monsters, and I'm not. I, I look, I'm not a bad guy, right? I've been living in the wheel a long time. I know the gnomes are very religious, and a lot of them have a lot of very spiritual beliefs, and and I, I respect that, right? If one of the treons came up to me with butterflies around its head, and it said. Corvican, I have come to speak with you on behalf of the forest. I'd be like, all right, pull up a seat. Let me get you some fucking coffee. But no, they're just breaking my shit. And they're not saying <laughs> anything either. They just show up and break my shit and leave. Like, that's not... Uh, I don't think it's insensitive of me to, to just want them dealt with. They're not talking to us. They haven't, they haven't left any grievances against my company. They're just busting up our stuff. You inherited this company from your father, right? Yeah, that's right. How did your father used to handle situations like this? Uh, well, my dad passed away uh, a, a little over a month ago, about a month and a half ago. That, that's why I'm in charge now. And uh, so unfortunately, you won't be able to talk to him yourself, but... He taught me just about everything he knows about living here in the Weald, running a company. He passed down a lot of secrets about how to deal with the gnomes and, and live in harmony with, with the nature here, or at least deal with it. But he was never attacked by Treons. He did tell me that one time, a uh, long time ago, apparently... Um, one of his, one of his cousins had a problem with an earth elemental that attacked their uh, their mines over on this end of the highland. How did that end up turning out? <laughs> I'm not sure if that's even relevant. Sorry, I'm rambling. And you haven't all right. You haven't changed anything from your father's business practices. Not that I'm aware. I mean, I was working here the whole time, working right under him. And uh, after he passed, God rest his soul, I, uh, I took over. I mean, he wasn't exactly a huge friend of nature either. I mean, he, he was here to do business. He was a good businessman. <laughs> Zara, <laughs> Zara kind of chuckles when he mentions friend of nature. <laughs> Stops or stuff. They're hard to come across, those friends of nature. So, <laughs> Zara between... Gron sneezes. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever he is. You got any medical supplies? We got a little beat up. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we got a med station. We don't exactly have any much in the way of magic here. But, here. uh... I might be able to help. You, you can come on into the mess hall and... You know, take your time, recuperate. I've got medical supplies for you, bandage and medicine and stuff. We'd appreciate that. We very much would. Because mm -hmm. I don't think I have a healer kit. <laughs> I, I'm not really sure what we do, but it seems to me like the, the dungeon is causing nature to stir, and this is just how the, the experience have to deal with it. It's not something that the four of us can deal with. We had plans to deal with that eventually. Do you just want us to sit here and defend the, the sawmill till God knows when? Well, there's a limited number of them. And you know, some of my boys have said there's a real big one, too. Oh. There's one that's real big. It shows up once in a while. But uh, I ain't never seen it with my own eyes. 
a big one we might be able to reason with. Possible. Maybe if it'll... Uh, any of y'all speak tree? Eris does, but we didn't bring her. N normally my ex speaks tree. <laughs> so he, he takes you into the mess hall. He, he provides you guys with bandages and, like, basic medicine, enough to substitute a healer's kit. Okay, that's good, because so I can... totally forgot that was a requirement for using medicine. So you can use well, medicine for that. Freya's gonna, like, pull out a leaf and be like, come here, Regal, and, like, start putting a leaf on, like, his shoulder oh. or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could you have the nature medicine. Yeah. yeah. What the hell is that gonna do? <laughs> oh, you actually should roll nature. But oh, I guess. nature. And you get a oh. plus. That's a good roll, though. You get a plus two to it if you have nature stuff around. I mean, it's the same. You have the same bonus, bonus for nature. I have the same nature. bonus for medicine and nature, yeah. Why did if you, you take If the you feed? use nature, it gives you plus two if you have natural uh, remedies around. Yeah. Okay, so we'll make that a 24 then, which I don't think makes a difference. I don't think Wait. so. I have battle medicine. Was a I don't know if I've got nature medicine. Oh, you don't have nature medicine? Eris has yeah. nature yeah. medicine. Yeah. yeah. You don't no, need I... nature medicine, so you just have uh, battle medicine. Cool. I've got battle got medicine, yeah. Oh, Zara, cool. we'll say that that gonna... just means you can do it during combat. Mm -hmm. Dogen, yeah. I guess that means you're with me. Womp. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I just I... heard him, but... I don't like your time to... My knee! I didn't even get a hit in the knee. So what are you doing? What is... Uh, Jeremy, you're the expert on medicine. What does Freya roll to heal Regal here? Uh, if she was aiming for a 15, then it's 2d8. Yeah. I would assume that that was a normal medicine check, not a heightened one. Mm -hmm. or, or it would have been said. Yeah, so 7. Now, well, thank you. Hey, what about me? It just wrapped my leg. Not even hurts. My, my shoulder... I'm doing my best. This was one of my retrains. I haven't done this very much. I'm true, but I'm gonna amateur. Can you treat me and slip? Let me see what I can do. And Freya will pull out like a like a bundle of small gray leaves or something and be like, "All right." <laughs> Why didn't well, bring your leaves? You, you actually, uh, so, you, so actually, someone cannot have medicine done to them. It's only what is it? Once per hour? Yeah, per hour. Oh uh, yeah. So it's like yeah. I guess in, we'll an, wait in an hour, hour, you guys yeah. can try again, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, Corvican says, uh, "So yeah, it's it's my it's my preference that you all just stay right here and defend my sawmill. You'll be fed and taken care of, and once the attack subsides, then uh, we'll we'll call it a job well done. If if we can go a full day without any Treant attacks or." Uh, if the big one shows up and you deal with him, that'll probably put a stop to it, I imagine. At least that's my genre savviness speaking. Any sort of, in any sort of tabletop games, usually when you kill the big one. And... <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> no, but I mean, if none of y'all speak Sylvan, you're gonna have a real hard time uh, talking this thing out, so. I will just kill it. I mean, they aren't just monsters. You know, even the gnomes don't go buddy up with Treons. They've got that big old illusion protecting them from all the bullshit in the forest. That's why they hire uh, us to take care of stuff like that for them. For all their, for all their nature love, the gnomes aren't, aren't uh, exactly opening their city up to the forest. They, they know there's all kinds of dangerous shit in it, too. Like, you know, one of those Treons would just take one of those gnomes and pop her little head like a grape. I wonder if this is the forest's way of fighting back against technology. You know, the, the dungeon, uh, assuming it's full of those dryads we came across, uh, I wonder if the, the forest is not so happy with this kind of technology anymore. It, it does seem like the Treons have been coming after our machines. They 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 haven't really killed any dwarves. They just break all of our our machines and stuff. It's just something what? something new is what's is driving them to do that because they weren't doing this for the years that you've been established here. That's right. They never bothered us before. All of a sudden, they hate all this machinery. I guess. We're thinking, Regal. It's not like the dungeon's new though. It's been around. It's been building and killing heroes for a while. 
Unless the yeah, dungeon they... has changed in some way recently. Maybe the boss moved into it lately. Or didn't the boss cause the dungeon? I'm a little confused on the chicken and the egg of the dungeon. Mm. Anything can create a dungeon. Stands to reason one might actually generate around the boss. It's possible. Well, I don't know anything about any of that. Well, seeing as we can't speak with trees, and uh, this place might come under imminent attack again, I've changed my mind. It might actually be better for us to stay put and deal with the problems as they come. That's what I've been saying the whole time. Alright, we'll wait here, and if I don't get attacked in the next hour, maybe I can get a real doc. <laughs> don't worry, I'll get better with practice. I'm not gonna be your practice. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, our, our chef has a little bit of practice with, uh, with, with stitching people up, but mostly amputation. Oh, I don't think I need amputation. I, think <laughs> I don't think you want any help from him. I think Dogen would be delighted to have help from the chef. He's real good at amputations. Anybody want Dolgren drumstick for dinner? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I've always wanted to try dwarf. I hear that's a goblin delicacy. <laughs> Zara's oh, chuckling so along with this. To be believed. So, uh, Bugle pulls up a seat. Like, so how how'd it go out there? We we were all listening from the mess hall, a whole lot of thunking around. You might have also I heard am. some screams from Dolgren as well. He wasn't in pain, he was just excited. I'm pretty excited. You should have sent me it. I almost chopped it on in one swing. Wow, that's impressive. Master Lumberjack here, you might have missed your calling, Dolgren. I am a miner, unfortunately, but I, I see what you mean. I mean, Lumberjacks and miners are pretty much the same thing. They just chop different materials. Uh, I am. I always say that says Bugle. We're basically wood miners. Uh huh. Uh huh. That makes no it. bloody sense. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I say that all the time. And Dolgren, don't act like you're any better than these guys just because you mine shit. You use their weapon of choice rather than a pick. I ain't better. I'm different. Hmm. Well, says Bugle. I mean, I, I, I. Not surprised y'all had a lot more luck with that monster than us. That's your trade. Y'all are in the business of monster killing. I'm sure you're good. a much better tree chopper than I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. Woof, those wounds look pretty bad. I, the goblin, cried about it quite a lot. <laughs> I've been through worse, and I don't hear you shutting your drap over there. All you're doing is whining. Nay, I only whining because my legs wrapped up tighter than a bearded uncle. I don't see you doing it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so Jake comes over and boom, just slams down the table a giant platter of roasted goat meat like oh. with a mix of like herbs and spices from the from the forest and the, and it, he's covered the middle of it in like this cheesy like cream sauce Ooh. okay so nice yeah. <laughs> i am uh, ready to here, taste that meat go to your <laughs> wild boar butcheries i'll take taste that. the meat <laughs> i'll take that ale now <laughs> i am i'll take that Freya will, like, break off one of the legs and throw it to Snowball. <laughs> goat tips and queso. Mm. <laughs> that is a goat delicacy. And now I remember I remember the keg heart slogan now. I had to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> had to look it up. Good for what ails ya. Oh, ah, that's a good one. <laughs> I've only got to remember what my own family's legacy name was. Yeah. <laughs> you can't give me another wisdom check. Maybe another slosh of ale will help. Nope. I, I can't remember it. There's you too many slogans rattling it. around in there. Yeah, you can't remember it. Ah, it's alright. I'm sure I'll be in He goes, oh, what, what company is your, your folks from? I didn't know you, uh, you were from the Crimson Kingdom. 
Hey, bet your bird I am. I'm from the uh oh hold on, I'm turning some go <laughs> Sunstone! My Nico, the one Oh uh, yeah. I I know them. I got uh, I got my wife's wedding ring from the from them fellas. Mm. Yeah, I met them, dug it up from the ground and the she, she's a she's a beauty. She's a beauty. Four feet tall, six hundred pounds. Oh, <laughs> let me guess. <laughs> <Name is Betsy. laughs> it feels like how? <laughs> <laughs> Pure condensed muscle mass. <laughs> I'd love to meet this lady one day. She can she can snap a, a oak log in half with her thighs. I oh, would eat her when we're fighting all these trees. We'll just throw Bessie's thighs at it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I remember the slogan they told me when I bought that ring: Sunstone Mining Company, beauty in the palm of your hand. Hey, that's that all right. Cause they do them them pretty gems and stuff. That's what they're all about, jewelry and whatnot. <sighs> all right, we'll eat up. Out of curiosity, there's not a, a guild that has a monopoly on uh, on tailoring, is there? Mm, no. Nah, That's mean, what we, I call we, an open market. <laughs> we uh, we dwarves are pretty pragmatic with our outfits. We pretty much just dress for the job. Uniforms are often provided by the company, so there isn't really a big uh, clothing market. Fashion is not really a thing in the Crimson Kingdom. Well, perhaps I can break them of that. You can try, but most dwarves are not willing to give up their uniform. I but if you design a new uh, uniform that improves productivity, then you might have your own company. Uh, yeah, there's definitely some tailors can find work designing uniforms for, like, working on a contract basis with the companies, for yes. sure. Typically, my that... focus is on adventurer looks, but an open market is hard to turn down. Uh, I mean, it's not like there are no tailors in the Crimson Kingdom. I'm sure plenty of tailors have... I mean, someone had to design the uniforms that we're all wearing now, so, I mean, there are tailors. But there's not, like, a big company dedicated to it because dwarves don't really care about fashion, so it wouldn't be super lucrative. I'm sure I could find a niche. All right. Yeah, I mean, I I, I sell meat to gnomes, so there's always <laughs> a You might find some dwarves who uh, really like fashion, and they would, they would be a market that's not being provided to. So, you know, he goes back in the kitchen. Uh, he's in. Yeah. Uh, while we're like scrounging around through all like the medical supplies and stuff, were there any like medicinal herbs or anything in there I could use for alchemy? Uh, yeah, totally. Why? Uh, well, I was a little disappointed because we used both our quicksilver potions on the first fight, and now it sounds like we're gonna get attacked tonight, and I'm worried that we're not gonna have them. So I was wondering if there's anything I could use to make a couple of Quicksilver potions. No. Uh, are you out of reagents? I am. Okay, so you can definitely do, like, normal alchemy crafting. Yeah, that's uh, why I was wondering if there were any, any like, herbs it... or anything here. Yeah, you, you have materials available to you, but um, what's the time constraint on that? Like, how long does it Not take sure. to do it? I feel like it's just normal crafting at that point. I think so. So it would take like a day. Ooh. Maybe? Let me see. Crafting. Crafting. Okay. Okay. The item has to be your level or lower. You have to have the formula. You have appropriate tools, raw materials. <laughs> you have to spend four days of work. Oh, God. What? Can't be for an alchemy item. And I'm reading started. like the general. I'm reading the general crafting information, like the general rules for crafting an item. That's in the um, house, are you? Uh, give me a sec. Well, I'm just reading the general rules for crafting any item, right? Like I don't know if there's specifically stuff for alchemy. Here we go. Alchemical crafting feet. Uh. You can use the craft activity to create alchemical items. It's looking like it takes four it takes days. Four days to make an alchemical item already. Um, 
how much is a Quicksilver thing worth? Uh, let's see. Like in money. Yeah, I'll look it up. It's the level 3 one, so 12 GP. 12 gold. Those are quite expensive. Wow. There's definitely not 12 gold worth of herbs and shit in this <laughs> kit. That's... <laughs> Um, Alrighty, never mind. I mean, it takes four days anyway. We don't have time for that. Yeah, damn. Ain't nobody got time for that. Alright, well, we're uh, out of luck then, I think. Mm. Doing it the old fashioned way. We'll have to go on raw skill. I don't have any of that. Oh. All I have is my knowledge. I suppose that'll have to do. Oh, and I found out the reason I had 3d4 on the alchemy gum macro was because it is a striking weapon. Oh. oh. My bad. So that makes sense. Yeah, because it's plus one striking, the 3d4. Yep. That would be correct. Nice. What about the splash damage? Splash damage is still four. Oh, I mean, you had that extra damage. I don't know if that's what that was. Oh, yeah, guns don't do... The alchemy gun doesn't do oh. splash. And I also... In reading my... Goblin feet burn it... Uh, found that... I do an extra plus one damage. I don't know where the... D6 came from, but... Yeah, so... Plus one damage, because it's an alchemical... So item. your gun is actually 3d4 plus one damage, yeah. mm. then. Nice. Your bomb should also be plus one damage, then. Those are, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Your gun seems to be all set. Yeah, unfortunately, by the rules, it seems like once you're out of reagents, you're kind of, like, fucked for a while. No worries. Um, we'll yeah. Alright, does an hour pass before the next, uh, uh tree attack? Yeah, absolutely. You guys can re-attempt some meta if you'd like. Would you like All my right. help, Freya? You can, you can, uh, you, I believe in you. You know, I believe in second chances. That's a, something that Dolgren lives by. You can, you can perform my, oh, my surgery. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so that'll be 2 Almost a crit. Yeah, not quite. There. Wow. Good roll. Oh. Cool. Thank you for having faith in me, Dolgrim. That means the world it's to me. It's been an hour, then somebody can try it on me, too. Alright, I'll give it a oh, try. Only there was somebody around. Anybody but you. <laughs> <laughs> I also specialize in amputation. I would prefer right. the butcher over you. That's, that'll <laughs> do it. So 2d8, that just barely passes. 10 thank for you, Regal. Thank you. Nice, that's pretty good. Regal's looking pretty good. And yeah, then, do honestly, both of you are. And Dolgren gets temp HP anyway, so it's like, yeah, you guys are not in bad shape. So oh, and I forgot to do this earlier. Everyone take a, um, a D6 potion. Uh, Thank you. I made Healing a potion. Today. Elixir of life. For I'll, I'll drink it right now. Okay. I mean, hey, it's well, probably I mean, better yeah. just to get somebody on their feet. If you use it in combat, then, I mean, that's that's one action down, so... Yeah, it's good to use out of combat. Nice! Wow. Was it a 1d6 or a 1d4 potion? 1d6. Okay. Not plus anything? Okay. Alright, I'm more likely to kill the thing that dropped you than bringing you back. And you may you may as well drink one too, Regal. Use them, using them out of combat uh, I'd, I'd rather keep one to keep one in case somebody goes down. Okay. Alright, sounds good. You are lacking on magical heals, so not the worst idea. If we get another hour, we can just get another medicine roll too, so maybe that was a bit of a waste premature, but I just got rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys just, uh, you're just chilling in the mess hall? Yep, socializing, drinking, eating, eating, having... I mean, I guess we could leave. It's drinking in moderation. Oh. So, after a little while, Percival comes to the mess hall, and he's staying distant from like the workers tables like with a look of distaste mm. and he goes up to the chef and is like uh 
Do you have anything, um, more palatable than the, uh, all that mess? And, uh, the, the chef is like, uh, I got some chicken. He goes, yeah, so the chicken will do. Uh, actually, with utensils, please. Thank you. <laughs> he, uh, he makes his way over to a table and sits down and uh. gets out a bunch of books and notes and, like, pen and ink. And he, it looks like he, he's going to take a, a really late working lunch. It's, like, afternoon. He hasn't eaten yet. A man of class. So he's just over there, balancing the books, mm -hmm. waiting for his chicken. Love the door fit work. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't actually uh, belong to the Oakenhide Company. He's like a contractor, right? The Money Mansers are independent entities. They're like brought in to help with financial stuff. Mm -hmm. He is basically an accountant. There is some magic involved, though. Oh. Like, you, you see him, uh, he has, like, a piece of paper with a shit ton of numbers on it. And as he writes new numbers in, it seems to, like, do the addition and subtraction for him. Like, he had, oh. he had like, a magical Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah. He's got Excel. <laughs> he has the power Excel. of Microsoft. He has magical Excel on his parchment, yeah. <laughs> Ah, yes, Bill Gates, the best <laughs> money mentor ever. <laughs> Inventor. So, I suppose Zara, uh, after after a moment or so, would uh, would get up and walk over to uh, to him. Okay. He goes, oh. Pardon, may I join you? Uh, I suppose. I just want to uh, talk a little more about the, the business at hand. We're trying to deduce yeah. what might be uh be spurring these treants on and we're trying to eliminate any any internal factors very well my time is valuable so make it quick um Zara will we'll take out the uh the one silver coin that she has and just put it on the table and slide it forward a little bit um hope that buys me a couple minutes at least <laughs> very well <laughs> He, he takes the silver coin and pockets it. I'll accept that as a consulting fee for one minute. <laughs> <laughs> so it, um, it strikes me that these attacks came, it seems, only weeks after the change of management. Correct. Do you know of any other changes that, uh, that came about as a result? Corvigan seems to have taken his father's teachings to heart. As far as I can tell, almost all policy decisions are the result of long-standing family tradition. Hmm. Alright, so no change to the business practice. No new machinery has uh, been installed? Correct. The machines are all quite old. I was brought in as a consultant to assist Corvican because, after all, he is a new owner. He's only owned the company for about a month, so he himself wanted to make sure that everything was in order. His father actually didn't have a money mancer employed. He used to years ago, but he, he outgrew the need, which happens with veteran owners who have who've owned a company for a long time. And uh, after all, Oakenhide is uh, smaller than a lot of the other companies. There isn't as much to do. Uh, Blackbeard employs a fleet of ten money mancers to handle the Golden King's expenses. Goodness. Well, so while he's saying that, I kind of want to like discreetly glance at his at his numbers and see if like, what I'm looking for is to see if business is going well or if business has been trending down. Okay. All right. What's your perception <laughs> bonus? Uh, let's see. It is eight. Okay, and what's your stealth your stealth bonus? Stealth is eleven. <laughs> okay, cool. He doesn't notice that you're looking, but it's hard for you to get a clear picture. Overall, it looks a business looks fine, but it's like you don't have a lot of context. It's hard for uh, mm -hmm. like it. It seems like it's going fine. It's not 
they're not like doing incredible. It's not like booming, but business definitely isn't bad. Okay. They're basically like making a steady, decent profit. The the it's like the guy told you guys when you first showed up. The profit margins are pretty tight. Right. For in this line of work, so they they're not like they're not booming. It's you know, they make a little bit every every quarter. And the uh, the owner was Corgrim, is that right? Corvican is the Corvican. current owner. Yes. So uh, Corvican uh, expressed to us that he wasn't planning to harvest the treants for their wood because, um, well, living wood might cause unpredictable effects in the products they're made from. Is that your assessment as well? Mm, absolutely. Do yeah. not use monsters as products. History has taught us that lesson. You build a house out of stone from an earth elemental, one morning it walks away. <laughs> you don't turn monsters into products. Right. Well, that uh, that definitely assuaged some of the some of the worries that I had. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right, and no new property acquisitions in the time before the uh, or since the transfer of ownership? No. Now, Corvigan's been playing things pretty close to the te to the chest, like keeping business as usual, trying to acclimate to his new position. He wouldn't do anything uh, ambitious right now while he's trying to learn the ropes. Interesting. Um, it's understandable that you would consider the possibility that there is an internal reason for these attacks, but there really isn't. Understood. Corv Corvican is a, an ethical business owner just trying to make a living in a dangerous world filled with monsters. And I can certainly respect that. I just wanted to make sure to clear up all, uh, all avenues of approach. Of course. Whatever has caused the Treons to become agitated or influenced their hatred of machines, it didn't come from us. I see. Well, if the, uh, the dungeon in the area is the cause of their agitation, well, we hope to have that resolved fairly soon. But in the meantime, we'll stick around to be a, a more short-term deterrent. Wonderful. Until the Thank problem you. at least thins out. Much appreciated. That would be what we hired you for. <laughs> well, pleasant talking with you. Mm-hmm. Well, while they're having that conversation, I'll just talk to the group and be like, if, if numbers are still cutting dry and they didn't have enough money to hire a bodyguard for the place, what, why do they have a money man sit out here and some barely breaking even lump? What, what kind of money do they have to count or income do they have to gain from having him here? Who are you asking that? I'm just telling it to the people around me, like the... Uh oh. Party. Yeah, well, they're talking. Okay, oh, just talk the, like, the your party or, like, employees? Anyone around to listen. Okay. Yeah, well, one of the employees is like, oh, well, I mean, having a money, having one money mancer is, is pretty typical. Open Hide might be, might be on the smaller side, but we're still one of the ten great companies. Uh, some of the other employees are like, yeah, and they, like, hit the table. Don't call us a barely breaking even company you son Ooh. of a bitch <laughs> I didn't respect it just one just one lumber mill I'm sure he's got dozens operating all over but it just seems I, I'm just not used to the customs I guess I suppose I didn't have a uh, money answer down in every mine I was in so yeah they seem to take offense it does seem that culturally it's not unusual for one of the company. It's it's actually almost unusual for a company not to have a money mancer. It's more like Corvican's father just got so good at the business and like it was a small enough business that he was able to do his own accounting. But that's not it's not normal for people to do their own accounting. Like CEOs usually have accountants. So yeah. I need to do me any disrespect. <laughs> Right, well, he, he, he takes his chicken to his room. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
Zara will rejoin the party at their at their table. Well, I wonder how long till the next attack. I don't know, but Zara's gonna get a glass of water and just have it sitting on the table untouched. Okay. <laughs> Print detector. So if only just out of boredom, Bugle makes his way back over and, and sits down with you guys. There ain't, there ain't nothing to do around here because we we can't lock right now, so. I see that. It's probably like we're under some sort of quarantine. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. <laughs> uh, aye, aye. So what's hero and work like? Pay well? Very. Very. Mm. Not until a higher level. Higher level you get, the better the pay. The riskier the oh, jobs. Oh yeah, y'all gotta be heroes for that kind of kind of thing. I. I don't think we have any heroes here. Hey, it doesn't happen to everybody. Mm. We were fortunate. If it weren't for a gold dragon, I might still be mining. You and that gold dragon again. Don't like, even get me started. <laughs> uh, did you say did you say gold dragon? Hey. Uh oh, here he goes. Oh, oh <laughs> don't get him started. <laughs> it, it saved my life. It scooped me up out of a lava pit with its wing and raised me out of the fire like a new bird. Never seen uh, something. My uh, my my uncle my. My uncle's cousin's brother's nephew's third roommate. He uh, he told me, or well, he told him. Who told him? Who told him? Who told him? Who told me <laughs> that back in the Crimson Kingdom, there's a there's a good dragon down there, down in the mines, ancient guardian of the dwarves, or maybe uh, maybe something else. <laughs> oh, how did they know? Well, he said he saw it with his own eyes. What is the dwarf's name? I must speak to him immediately. Oh, I don't know his name. Alright, well, I'll keep an eye out for this brother, uncle, cousin's twice removed roommate from college, twice. But he's telling the truth, because I, of course, have seen it to myself. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah. And uh, it saved it... me, so it is a quite a guardian. Yeah, everyone's heard the stories. And by everyone, I mean a couple of people. <laughs> but I think it's real. I think it's real. Hey, okay, it is. It is. I bet yeah. back to the dwarf and my, my beer run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely real. It's definitely a gold dragon down there. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad, to, glad to see you believe me. Finally, someone does. There's In fact, stubborn, I, big headed goblins. Just, I, you know, I, heard, I heard there's a, there's a bunch of them. I heard there's ten. Nay, that is false hearsay. I heard there's ten gold dragons down there. It's a council. They control the Crimson Kingdom from the shadows. That's ridiculous. Now you're just getting into conspiracy level talk. No, they definitely do. Keep in mind how many degrees of communication this has gone through. Now, I... now th think on you this. How do you know there aren't ten gold dragons down there I... secretly controlling the Crimson Kingdom from the yeah, shadows? Dolgren. There's only know? the one. There is only the one. one. Doesn't a mean a bunch of the uh, a bunch of the employees are like snickering, <laughs> and one of them is like, "He actually did it." <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing at you because of course there's not ten. There's only one, and it's uh, it's there's one guardian, not ten. That's ridiculous. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. You're right. There is there is one, but he he's got ten heads. No, no, no ten heads either, only the one. Mm -hmm. Zara sees what's going on and just like quiets down, sits back and enjoys this. <laughs> I am gonna have to work with your cousin's twice removed uncle's brother's nephew's roommate twice removed to straighten his story out, because obviously there's one guardian of the of the it has no two in heads, no ten siblings, nay, only the one. So so what uh what what does it look like then? It looks like a new dragon, but Made out of pure, glistening gold. Oh, the spirit! The the room erupts with laughter. <laughs> hey, it's not a funny <laughs> laughing matter. And and one, they got... one, of the, one of the guys in back he said, "I heard that it was actually covered in gemstones and had gems for eyes." Ooh, uh, sounds uh, pretty. 
And then a couple of gemstones between its scales, but to nay, none for eyes. Another one says, I bet a gold griffin down there. That's preposterous. They don't live underground. How would they plot? <laughs> and one, one dwarf says, yeah, yeah, I met a gold, uh, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. One of them jabbed me. <laughs> You can't come up with anything. I'll, I'll take on any dwarf that challenges my honor of this dragon. They're all just like laughing behind their hands. Like I'm just gonna walk around trying to look for someone to punch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the whole room's fucking with you, so you can definitely punch literally anyone you'd like. All right. Zara that tries to look as unpunchable as possible. That sounds like an open <laughs> offer. I'll go around and punch anyone that looks cute out of place. Okay, you just punch one of the employees? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> how hard do you hit him? Uh, I guess, see, yeah, I guess make mana arm attack. <laughs> uh, and they only for five damage. Okay. Pretty yeah, good. So you kill you, this man? I so you punch him hard in the face, he like topples over out of his chair. And then uh, all the employees stand up and get their axes out. I'll get my axe out then. I'll like, challenge all of you! My 30, 30 loggers get their their axes out. Load up the battle map, I'll take all the <laughs> An attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. You you've insulted the Oak and Hyde logging company. Regal's like fight! <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of, bunch of break-even charlatans afraid to use three ends of boxes and are afraid it'll eat your grandma while you're just mind through. Alright, well... <laughs> one of them's about to swing the axe at you. Oh, boy, and then, bring uh, it on. Corbican is like, STOP! <laughs> <laughs> He's like in the doorway. And they all, they all freeze. Zarb. like... WHAT IN THE HELL IS GOING ON IN HERE?! Zara breathes a sigh of disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the employees is like, hey, he, he punched John in the face! And John's like, it's true, I got my bruise right here. He says it like I they've never had a bar fight. <laughs> Corkin stomps up to Dolgren. You hit one of my boys?! You best believe I did. He insulted my honor as a as a dwarf. Is that true? John's like, no, nah, we're all just having a laugh, telling some funny children's stories. Hey, they're children's stories. It's true. Well, one of those things are until they got way out of proportion. <laughs> what the hell is this all about, says Corbican? Oh, boy. Hey, I was telling them of the golden dragon that I met. Oh boy. Here we go. Corvigan puts a hand on your shoulder and then he, he pulls Dolgren close. <sighs> you adventurous. You put yourselves in the line for us every day. Don't any of you have any pride? Clearly, head trauma from his dangerous line of work. It's called How you all pick on this poor dwarf who put his his life on the line for us? <laughs> <laughs> I have put my life on the line, but nature the head trauma. That's why I wear the helmet. <laughs> He's no, he's terrible, got a serious case of head trauma, that's terrible right. Terrible head trauma has caused him to vividly hallucinate. <laughs> Zara is watching the glass intent glass of water intently like, come on, anytime now. <laughs> <laughs> you poor you poor hero. It's, it's okay. I'm sure the gold dragon's real. Don't you worry about them. I ain't it's take real. a seat right take a seat right here. Chef, get some warm milk. Careful, he's oh, gonna punch him too. Oh no! Warm <laughs> milk does sound quite good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, he, he, bless you, precious, precious soul. He, he kind of leans over the rest of the party. Thank you for uh, ta taking care of this poor dwarf. Of course. Yeah. You're welcome. We're sorry about the trouble he caused. He, he gives Dolgren a little thumbs up. Buck up, buddy. It'll be it'll be all right. I didn't Sometimes know. he's too stupid for his own good. He's he's not what he used to be.
he used to he Where actually he used to be level this... nine. The head trauma kind of knocked him back a few levels. We're trying to get him back to his his prime prime though. He used to be a scholar. He's a very powerful wizard. Yes, he was a level nine wizard, <laughs> believe it or not. Fran's just gonna walk to the other side of the... I, you, can gonna insult leave. Me all, you can insult me all you want, but as long as you don't lay a hand on my family, my beard, or my dragon, you can talk as much shit about me as you want. I just... you, you, hear, uh, you hear some of the men over by the windows being like, Oh, what the hell is that? And you see the water like... Boop, boop. Oh, yeah, the water on the table is going. There's some something huge out there. Here we go. Coming. If it's the big one, let's see if we can flag it down. Maybe get some some pantomime going. But otherwise, it pulls out a clips. Alrighty, so you guys, uh, you head outside. Mm -hmm. Yep. I sure Maybe do. I shouldn't go out. Maybe this thing should wipe a lot of you off the earth. You know, the, the first thing I want to ask is saying, why couldn't it have come about ten minutes earlier? <laughs> so oh, you head, out, head outside. It's, uh, it is it is like uh, sundown it is now, and uh, so they've lit up. They've lit the torches. Oh, it's look it's how pretty cool well, furnace look. pretty well lit. Yeah, little furnace is going. Yeah. Wow. Hey, uh, friend, don't forget to change your max health back. Oh. Yep, so it's nighttime, and they're they're coming. Once again, you have plenty of time to set up your defense. This time, you, you probably, you imagine there's going to be, there's going to be more of them this time. I would, I actually would like to set up a defense. I want to get out Last my... time they snuck in through the south and almost got it. Uh, I want to. I want to go over here and like get out my rope and tie like a rope if I can between these two pillars oh, so that oh. if they walk through it'll be like Trip. it'll be like ATS. It'll be like uh, ATS. Exactly. Oh ATS. Yeah, yeah, you're right. ATS. Yep. So I want to tie some. Tie a, tie a rope around these two uh, two things of, of logs. At least try to find a good anchoring point for that. So try to come in from the northwest that they will stumble and potentially become prone. Okay. Uh, so you're going to tie that rope off. It's going to be... Where exactly? Do your, do your ruler to yeah, show me. Yeah, just like the best that I can to just like t anchor it between these two log piles. Like that? All right, yeah, put like the ruler just... away. Zara's gonna Perfect. set up one right here. Okay. Cool. I could do one down at the south end too. There you go. Maybe like, like, like Car? this or something. No, mm, they're not really. Yeah, the the it's not really tall enough to do it. Well, the cart to the to the log pile though. Maybe. Right. Now I have a question. I might just drag the cart. <laughs> I, I'm an expert digger with a shovel. How long will it take me to dig like five feet down and like oh. 20 feet? We're hearing the thuds already. Yeah, I mean, they're coming. You're not really sure. Uh, digging a hole is pretty tough. Ooh. But digging a five foot deep hole is ridiculous. Like that. That's uh, gonna... They were tall enough to like step on the platform. So I figured if we uh. put like a medieval like thing around they might not be able to step up what about piling these logs up with like something propping them up and we like have it have it on a pull string to have them roll out uh on top like onto or underneath one of them again endor that seems very complicated for me to set up i just had a rope okay <laughs> i don't know like trap making it's I just a cool had, idea I, I mean... yeah I get, I get it yeah i was thinking that it'd be cool to make like a little a little rock slide but with logs like a log yeah. slide yeah, you could try to set those log piles up to where they might fall and have like a rope. You someone have to be over here to trigger it. I don't have um, a, I don't have any more rope. I already used mine. Yeah. I've also, got 50 feet. Yeah, if you guys want to try to do something with that. Yeah, also Freya, good. the the torch behind you is flickering. You think you uh might be able to light your arrows on fire if you oh, want. Oh, nice. 
If you're like here, you could like. You have to be next to it, like in like yeah. in Lord of the Rings. You could use yeah. an act. You could use an action to light up your your the arrow you have like knocked, if you wanted to. Could be oh. worthwhile. Could be. It would I, that, it would make my... it do one fire damage, and which would be eleven because yeah, they're so would, weak ooh, to it. Dang, that'd be awesome. Yeah. What was your question? Uh, can I, because my double shot is basically me putting two arrows on my bow to fire yeah. at the same time. Can I light them both up? I would let you, yeah, I would let you hold, like, both of the arrows in the fire and light them both. Hey, Regal, yep. if you've got rope that we can use to set up, um, trip things for these, I can, I can hold those because I don't have any fire damage, but you do. Wait, what? If we're setting up, my uh, little... Like a trap? Little pull traps. To uh, to set off these log piles, I can if I, if you if you use your rope to set it up, I can I can be the trigger man on that, so you can still use okay. your fire damage. Yeah, if we decide to do that. Okay, so you got a couple of log piles here that you could you could basically tie a, the rope to like the bottom log <laughs> so that you can pull it and it'll like pull the logs out. Cool. Um, it will be an athletics <sighs> check to pull that out. Because they are logs. Right. So you might fail it and yank on it and nothing happens. That is a possibility. What if we set up a, a trigger where if we pull out like a little stick or something, then they start rolling <laughs> yeah, that's, out and it's a that's little what easier was, to pull out. That's what I meant. Okay. Something you can try it up. To, you, can, you can try to set that up. That's quite difficult. So like it'll take... You're gonna have to, you're, yeah, you're gonna have to like have some strong people hold the log up so you can put a little something under it. So, Dogren. all right, strong people, like, multiple people right, would have to work right. together call, there. Call out yeah. the dwarves. We can call out the dwarves. Yeah, we can have all those strong dwarves come out and help us with that real quick. Okay, so the, the dwarves will come out real quick and, and give you a hand. So yeah, you're able to give me a crafting check to set that up. Who has the highest crafting here? I'll have to be next Regal. Regal. So yeah, nice. uh, you're able to set up a rope trap to where if someone pulls the rope, the log piles will fall. Nice. Yeah. Um, where uh, Zara's gonna need to station herself like within within 50 feet of that, right? Yeah. So, like Ye or 40 feet for the. Yeah, exactly. Within 40 feet. Well, which log pile are you setting it up to? I think the one closer to the uh, to the thing, right? The thing? Guys? So this one right here? Yeah, that would make sense, right, guys? So, yeah, you yeah, need to be definitely. within Can within Freya 40 use her feet. hearing to, like, try to sense, try to hear where the thumping is coming from? Yeah, let me roll that for you. Uh, uh, unfor uh, unfortunately, you're not really sure. It almost seems like it's coming from all over. Yikes. Do we think we can talk to the big tree? Is there a plan still to talk to the big... There's a big tree. I mean, we can try. Big trees are wiser. We can try pantomime. I think I want to be a little bit more central if there's going to be more of them. And I don't really want to be dedicated to one side or the other. Maybe I should be closer to the... To the machine. Yeah, be like the machine elite guard. You know, like, if you're trying to protect the prince, you don't, like put their the like professional bodyguard like way over here in a corner you build them like right next to them the thing is they're they're not going to appear on top of it though if we catch them farther out that's more turns we have to deal damage to them before they get there of note this is a super important piece yeah um that's kind of removed it would it wouldn't be the easiest thing to get from where Dolgren and Freya are to the machine because there's a bunch of shit in your way but Freya's got the fire so, arrows. That would be good for taking yeah. down. Yeah, Freya could shoot people behind her, for sure. I think I just want to stand next to the machine and just attack anyone that gets close. I'm like a pit bull. I mean, that's one way to go, is to just dedicate Dolgren to machine defense, if that's how you guys want to play it. Well, Dolgren's a lot of our damage right now, because you got the axe vulnerability and the fire vulnerability. Exactly, that's why I need to be closest to the most important thing. Okay. So, I yeah, like it. If they get past us, then Dolgren's there to, to finish off what's left. Yeah, there's two range people. You can also and... just hang out like right around here or something. Regal, you want to take like uh, farther north, and I'll stay down here. Maybe a uh, snowball somewhere in the middle. 
I'll stand right here so if I need to I can jump off through the railing and into the bushes and make my way over to the machine. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Is that like a place to stand? Yeah. Is Zara where she's gonna be? Oh, uh, let's see, um Yeah. I'll sort of like You could it. even be on the thing up here too if you wanted to be. You can stand like where I was, right on the corner by the torch, like right up here. Yeah, I can be here, sure. Where's the tiger gonna be, Freya? Uh where he is is cool. Okay. You got it. Everyone all good? Yeah. Mm, I think Ringo's gonna be a little further back here. And these things don't count as beasts, right? Just for the record. They're not beasts. Okay, that's making sure. I didn't Correct. think so. Yeah. Do they count as fey? No. Okay. Alright, here we go. Like some, I'm envisioning this scene. We, we, are we Sauron? Are we the bad guys? Hans, yes. are we the baddies? Or, Sar or Saruman defending the Isengard's forge while the tree beard and the hobbits are. So four corners, guys. Four corners. We, we've got the dam. <laughs> like we're defending the dam. Do we flood the? We don't flood the dam, but we're protecting the. Yep. So you've got a treant in each corner. There are four treants. One of these corners. Big corner. guy doesn't look to be here yet. Nope. Big guy has not arrived on round one. But he's coming. You guys can see, uh, plus, you can actually see. That. So you can see that he is coming from, from directly to the left. You can see, uh, trees actually, like, being pushed apart by something huge coming from directly west of you. So you know the big guy is going to appear, like, here in a while. Like, you don't know when he'll get here, but you can see him coming, because you can see trees being pushed apart. And that'll be the initiative. Alright, here we go. So maybe Freya focus on the bottom right one? Freya and Dolgren focus on the ones like top right, bottom right. Top right is within my range right now, but I don't know which one's going first. That one. Okay, yeah, never mind. Oh. I can get either one of those. Uh. Why did my music stop? What the fuck? Hold on, I gotta refresh. Something weird happened. Yeah, it oh, happened to me in the first fast. fight, but yeah, quick refresh and the music started for me. These fast ass trees, my god. Yeah, they, have 20, they have 25 movement speed. And like 15 initiative. Long legs. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, they're slow moving, but they are 15 feet tall. So they have, they have like a human's move speed, despite being three times the height of a human. You gotta keep in mind. You gotta keep that in mind. Like they're slow for how big they are. They they should be moving much quicker than a human because of their 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 legs are longer than a human is tall. They, they are moving very slowly. They just have a huge stride. Um. So then, where where the hell is this one? I have such a big map. Okay, it's this guy. So here we go. So he's going to try to do this, and he's going to hit the trip wire, <laughs> or the trip rope, and we're going to go ahead and, and make a save here. I'll just scroll all the way down. Okay, so that actually, uh, he runs into it, and he just, he just basically pulls his way through it, like pulling logs off of the stacks around him. But it does stop his movement. So he, he just kind of like, just walks through your rope trap, toppling the piles over that the rope was attached to. But uh, it does slow him down. Basically like difficult terrain. Freya. I'm going to 
mark this guy as fray, knock two arrows, light them on fire, and shoot both of them. Okay. Absolutely can do that. Hit. Minus five. Okay, so one hit. Four plus eight is... Twelve plus one fire. Mm-hmm. Well, plus eleven fire. So the twelve becomes... Twenty-three. Twenty-three minus his piercing resistance. There we go. There's your damage. All right. Where's this guy? There he is. So he does that kind of thing, walking between the piles. And that was his turn, Dolgren. All right, I would like to hop down into the into the bushes. Okay, yeah, give me just. Well, no, you can just do it. You can just go over the railing. That count is ten feet of movement, just because you had to go over the railing. Okay. And I'll just like go up here, and then I'll I'll raid, uh, and I'll just mumble. They might not believe in you. But I do. We are we are one. And I will uh, channel into my my rage into my axe, and it'll it'll burst into a huge flame. All right, big golden flame. Yeah. Zara. Um, is this guy down here? He's not on the trap yet, is he? No, he didn't have the move speed to get in front of it. It does look like he may pass in front of it though, so you could ready. Okay, I can take other actions while I ready. Or like, well, take like two to... actions and ready a third? It takes two actions to ready an action oh, okay. in this game. Yeah. Alright, then oh, I'll... Oh, yeah, yeah, in this game you can spend two actions to ready one action. Yeah, there's a there's like an action cost to it. So you can like take one action and then use your other two actions to ready the trap, mm-hmm. basically. And if he passes in front of it and it's not ready, you're just not going to do anything. So. Okay, yeah, I'll, I guess I'll spend this turn readying that, that pull then. What would your last... You could attack with your last action or do something I, else. He's out of range for my for my attack. Okay. So minus two. It gives you a minus two then. Oh, I... It's a 20-foot range. Uh, minus oh, four. Well, <laughs> minus four, yeah. The other thing I was thinking about doing is with the torch here, just taking my um, my star knife and just like holding it over the torch and letting it heat up. Not like catch fire, and it might might even hurt my hand a little bit, but get it a little bit I, hot. I don't, I don't think work. that will. Okay, do fire right, damage, never mind. Yeah. Then. So how much? Work? We not minus four to throw it from here. Minus four, yeah. All right, I'll go for that. But if there's any amount of butter nearby, it'll it'll go through it like. <laughs> <laughs> like a yeah. star knife through hot butter. Yeah, the, yeah, the problem yeah. is that lighting an arrow on fire only yeah. gives it one right. fire damage. So, like, yeah. throw comparatively, to me. yeah, having your metal be hot won't. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. No problem. All right. Just thought. Yep. Just because you can't really go down yeah. from one fire damage to. I anything. hear you. I hear you. But yeah. yeah. At, at fire damage. Throwing that and then readying my uh, my other action to pull on the rope when he gets in place for it. All right, he double moves to there. Oh, I'm in range. And then he does his reach attack. His match. Tree bash. That's a tree hit. Oh, I GM. Did I GM roll it to me? No, I didn't see it. I mean, I see see it. it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Okay. Thirteen. Not bad. All right. That'll be him. <clears throat> uh, Regal is going to move to... What's his move speed? I think it's 30. Yeah. Yeah, it was 
some really intricate pixel art on these guys, Zan. Mm. Awesome job. Rico's gonna move to there. He's gonna point his alchemy gun, gun at this guy and just lay into him. Get him. So here's one. That's a big old miss. Minus five. Or another big old miss. Alright. Yikes. Mm. Actually, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Gonna hero point the first uh, one? Or? Not worth yeah. it. I don't really? think it's worth With it. The big tree's coming. If he's, if he's not I'm a thinking. talkative one, you yeah. know. That's what I'm worried about, too. Alright, that's my turn. This guy double moves up to the machine. And oh, with no. His with his last action, he grabs it. So he, like, reaches around it, and he basically hugs the the big metal furnace like he's going to rip it out of the ground on his next turn. But he, he's out of action, so he's going to have to make that attempt next turn. This guy is still, like, tied up. Like, the, the rope attached to the fucking things. So he, he has to, like... like kinda, he's dragging it along. He's going to make a... He's going to try and climb up here. Uh, he's having some... He's having some trouble. He manages to get untangled by the rope, and he climbs halfway. He's like halfway up when he ends his turn, so it, it really delays him. He basically has a rope around his legs. It's tied to a bunch of logs, so he's just like dragging it along. All right, Freya. I'm just gonna light. I'm gonna knock two arrows, light them on fire, and then shoot him at that guy. Cool. Miss. Um. Oh no. Yeah, this is going really badly. This is not good at all. So they miss. Yeah. Uh, I think I have to run guy. back and stop him from lifting it off. Don't... Don't to that guy. I'll order Snowball to go attack that guy. All right, Snowball fucking books it over there and uh, goes for an attack. And misses. Oh, no. This is going so bad. This is not good. So this Treon is going to walk in front of your thing. Oh, don't spring the trap there. Yeah, so you pull it. That gives him a, uh, a save. Okay, so the the trees hit him. The pile, like, slams into him. And it basically forces him into the fucking water. Oh, nice! <laughs> like, it rolls him into the lake under them. He takes some damage. He takes 12 bludgeoning. Okay. Um... So then, uh, difficult terrain, kind of like struggles to pull himself up, and he, he he drags himself up onto this like ramp, and that's the end of his turn. All right, Dolgren. I am gonna have to ask you to put that down. What's, what's the rule <laughs> with like flanking big creatures? Can I? Yeah. It looks like you're flanking. Yeah. Am you're I flanking the big critter? Right right through the middle. You, yeah. you are flanking as you're running over to that guy. The the tree on oh, behind no. you takes an oh, attack God, of they opportunity. They have an attack of opportunity. Oh, attacks of opportunity, yeah. That is really bad. Oh my goodness. As you leave. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's you're okay. Time. All right. You got more health than you know what to do with. All right, I'm going to try to kill this thing. All right, hit him. Oh! Woo! Good God, Dolgren! So... How do you do that on Q? 30, 36 slashing and 8... 18 fire. I'm letting him do the vulnerability. Oh, I'm okay. just doing the double. So 36 plus 8. So 44 normally, right? So 44 becomes 54 becomes 59... Yep, yeah, you kill nice. it. Wow. Oh, wow. 
you run up and bury your axe like deep into it and it just lights on fire and it crumbles into it like a pile of burning okay, wood. Okay, so that was only two actions, so I'm gonna move back to in defense of the, uh, the... Nice. Well done. Alright, Zara. Okay, so that guy is out of the water and standing up and everything now? He, yeah, he's currently standing on the ramp. Okay, uh, I'm going to... Because he had like two actions left after the trap, yeah. so... Ah! I'm gonna move up to here, uh, and I'm gonna toss uh, Eclipse like a freaking boomerang at him. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna demoral... I'm gonna try to, try to demoralize first uh, with a glance. You got it. I've got intimidate with a with a glance on there. So. What? Success. Ooh. Is that a good normal success? Crit? Oh, darn nope. Uh, okay. Normal. All right. So he's frightened one. Okay. And then here comes the boomerang. Oh. Fuck. All well, at right. At least Dolgren can roll well. I'm yeah. Like... <laughs> All right. This one right here. Uh, he is. Because of Dolgren's position, he is forced to move forward one. <laughs> nice! <laughs> thinking there. He wasted one of his actions. Ah, oh, I'm just a simple-minded fool. It was a complete Being accident. Barely out of out of range. Okay. So then attack. Ugh, hit. Can you? You don't have to hit me like every time. It's okay if you yeah. miss several. All right. So I did miss one. Every <laughs> take thirteen. Regal. All right, Regal's gonna count on Dolgren to take care of that one up there, and he's gonna start trying to work on this guy up here. Uh, okay. So this does this count as a square for this creature? This one right here? It looks like it does. It does. It does. He's also flat-footed because he's mid-climb. Oh, excellent. So we're gonna he's like we're yeah. gonna start throwing some bombs <laughs> as as we do. So here's the first bomb attack. Twenty-two. I think that one hits. Definitely nice. hits. Yeah. All right, he takes nine whole fire damage. So 19. Yep, but he has three persistent fire damage, which I'm hoping... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it works, works the way I want it. Oh, balls. Uh, it does. Oh, balls. <laughs> does. He'll take 13 every turn, correct? Oh, that wow. Is that is hell. Persistent damage is very good against things that are weak to Jesus. whatever it is. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, yeah. And then he's going to spray his gun at this guy uh, with his yeah. second attack. Flamethrower him. Uh, and somehow fuck. misses with the flamethrower. <laughs> fuck! <laughs> the wind is really strong right now. It just like, <laughs> blows it away. Like, God damn it, stupid thing! I need to recalibrate it. Blow away my star knife, too. And Freya's uh, arrows. <laughs> so with real windy last... right now. It's so windy. Yeah. My final action. I think I want to move like down here. Okay. Kind of get behind the <laughs> the thing. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. You don't want to get whack a mole by I the just tree. Tried to... <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. he that I just tried to light him on fire. And... It actually did light him on fire. So he finishes climbing up onto it, and then he moves to right here, and he and he, he you see like wooden claws <laughs> grasp around it, and you see him like look around. <laughs> <laughs> and then he uh he re he reaches out and and. Oh, Whoa, absolutely nice. he, he like slams the floor in front of you like you can't get regal. I think I figured yeah. out what it is. Anything up on that platform rolls terribly. That's the bad luck. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, Freya. All right, I'm gonna aim at. I'm gonna aim at this one. All right. I'm gonna action mark him as prey. Nice. Action, light my two arrows on fire. Okay. And then fire Go them. Nice. Let's see about the other one. Minus five. 
Very nice. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Oh my. Oh, yeah, so yes. a hit and a crit. So, hit and a crit. Oh my goodness. So nine, nine and six is 15. So that's 15. 12 and 6 is 18 times 2 is 32 plus 6 is 38 so 30 38 and 15 did you yeah. did you do the fire arrow thing I not did. yet oh yeah okay, she did but i haven't yeah, done the I did. yet so 38 plus 15 is normal damage uh then plus plus one fire per arrow and then it says that when you use this ability, they count as one instance of damage for the purpose of resistance and weakness. Oh. Yes. So it'll only be plus 10 fire, but also his his resistance to piercing only happens once as well. Oh. So the total result ends up being that much damage. <laughs> Not bad. There we go. Yeah, you just about put him down. Well, you got one more shot, right? <laughs> no, yeah, that was it. Bright light and fire. Oh, yeah, right. That was it, yeah. Really good. You did 60. <clears throat> wow. Alright, who's this guy? Where is he at? Ramp, Ramp Boy. Yeah. Rest he in peace, Nara. He comes stomping up the ramp. Ah, oh, shit. Do it, Dodd. And then he, uh... He stomps up to here. Oh, come on! And he just like grabs the fucking machinery here, and he gets ready to r just rip it all out on his next turn. Just uh, walks right past. Need a hand Zara. over here. <laughs> just walks right past Zara. Like, all right. He's... I, I will, will not be ignored. <laughs> I'll move in to try to swing at it. All right. So one action move, one action swing. I believe that yeah. it has. Yeah. So it's 26 he's flashing. And four. <laughs> Doesn't even matter, yeah. Because uh, just just his weakness to axes and fire would kill him. Alright, so I move 15 feet there and I want to climb up. Is that an athletics? Yeah, give me an athletics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're 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 there. That's my turn. Yeah. Wait. Alright, Zara. Was that a swing and a move? It was move, swing, move. Oh, okay. Yeah. <sighs> Zara's huffing at this thing. Uh, he's no longer frightened. Ah, uh, yes, correct. So I will move uh, to here. Uh, but a faint first for that. Yeah, faint will be worth it for the increased chance to hit plus the sneak attack. So yeah. <laughs> He's flat-footed you already, because he's, like, ripping the oh, machine, cool. trying to rip it uh, up. So you're, in your about fainting. you're, like, back attacking him while he's trying to pull this thing out of the floor, so he would be flat-footed. Yeah. All right. Watch out! Oh, nice. Wow, there we go. Okay, oh, nice. so... So, 10 plus 12, so... And you're doing slashing, so he doesn't resist it. So 22, right. and then he is blinded for one round. Mm -hmm. Unless he has dark vision. Oh. Let's see, let me go look. Uh, see in the dark. Yeah. Senses. Where are your fucking senses? No, he has low light, so he's uh -huh. blind for one Excellent. round. Excellent. Oops, sorry, that was damage, not, not attack. Uh, minus yeah. four for my second attack. There's the... Okay, so miss. Yeah. All right. Well, he's blind for one round, so there you go. Nice. Yeah. When you you hit him with you throw the eclipse and it spins around him and cuts his face, and it, it like lets go of the machine and puts its hands on its eyes. And it now it's like, So you definitely got it off of the machine. Regal. <sighs> My friend here needs to make a. Whatever it takes to put the thing out, and he takes his damage too. If he didn't already. Oh, on his turn, I forgot about that. So it doesn't go out. So he takes thirteen damage. Oh damn! <laughs> <laughs> Treats burn really well. It turns out. Who would have thought? Yeah. Uh. 
Unfortunately, this thing is in range of me, and I am a little worried about... It has an attack of ops, so... <laughs> I saw that earlier. And... Yeah. <laughs> uh, for whatever reason, trans have attacks of ops. Don't ask me. <laughs> if I wanted to take a step, could I, like, squeeze into this space? Okay, so, there it's acrobatics to squeeze. Because you are a small creature, you're actually going to be pretty good at it. That does help you. Um, so squeeze is an action. Uh, let's Ooh, see can here. Can I combine that with the step action? Mm, no, squeeze is an action that the movement's part of the action already. Mm, so I wouldn't be able to avoid the attack of opportunity by doing uh, that. Oh, step in order to... Yeah, I'd let you do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It looks like... Well, I think squeeze is a type of move. And it, and step is also a type of move. So they are actually separate. They're separate actions. Yeah, so actually you can't. Can Sorry, I do it with two off. actions? Uh, yeah. I'll let you step and squeeze as two actions. Okay, how far can I move with a squeeze? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um well okay so if you <laughs> oh my god it takes so okay yeah uh, you're you're just gonna get through it you just get through to the other side that's it okay so give me a uh, acrobatics check if you fail acrobatics you get stuck uh I really want you to fail this. No. 26. <laughs> uh, Confident with a 26. Alright, so with two actions, you slip through the other side. And then he pulls out a bomb and throws it at this guy. Okay. I really wanted you to get stuck. Oh, God, I really did not want to get stuck. That would have been amazing. 24. Right. You hit him. 15 Ooh! fire damage. And he is set of sunder, set of blaze. Alright, you got it. All right, somebody's got to kill this thing before it breaks our machine, though. We got Freya. Because my fire damage doesn't go until the end of his turn. Nice. That's my turn, though. All right, yeah. this tree up here is just gonna wail on uh, Dolgren. It's just full attacking Dolgren. Oh, aren't I, aren't I lucky? Miss. That's minus five, so miss. Miss. And then minus 10, 22? Hit. Okay. Ooh. He gets you for 14. Is he on... F is this guy on fire? He's on fire. Yep. He sure is. Yeah. Okay. So he he's still on fire and he takes 13 fucking damage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Freya. Uh, this guy's blind down here, so I think he's flat-footed, isn't he? Uh, he is flat-footed, correct. I'm gonna light my arrows. I'm just not even gonna bark this prey. I'm just gonna, like, shoot him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That is the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. Look how beautiful and happy he is. What a beautiful guy. Alright, so you do miss. Yeah, with himself. that one. Yeah, I see it, like... nice. Oh, that nice. hits. Oh, yeah. So you uh, you absolutely put him down. He's like blind, waving his arms around. You stick a flaming arrow between his eyes, and he just like lights on fire and then collapses into a pile. With oh, my nice. last action, I'm gonna scream, Snowball, get your ass up here! Okay. So where's uh where's Snowball? Oh, that's a big dude over there. Yeah, he's a big, big old chunk. Oh, chunker! <laughs> Where's Snowball gonna go, huh? Uh, just basically calling him to me. He's probably below me on this thing, however. Alright, so he'll... He'll run up on the rock and, and jump onto the machine and run along the bar and then... He's a tiger, so like, <laughs> you know... He's a cat, like, he, you know, he just climbs on this shit effortlessly. Alright. Uh, Dogren. Hey, time to chop you down.
So, 20 slashing, 4 fire. Okay. Yep, that puts him down. Alright, per second option, I have a readied item. I would like to... Uh, put it in my hand. Okay, yep, you can take it out. And then third action, drink. You can drink it, yep. Alright, drinking a lesser, lesser health potion, which heals me 2d plus. Okay. On your next turn, it will take an action to regrip your axe. Got it. Cool. So we'll we'll note that you have one hand off the axe right now with like, there's an open hand symbol that I want to put on you. There it is. There, the hand, the empty hand symbol. All right. Uh, all of you f hear the thumping, the loud thumping as uh, there's a this huge tree on. If you guys don't see it, it's over here. Mm -hmm. Coming up, and uh, as it is emerging from the trees, it opens its mouth, and it's like, Oya ka susan gaifa. With like a super deep, like, rough voice. No one speaks Sylvan, so you guys don't have a fucking clue what it yeah, just said. It's... It sounded angry, though. All right, Zara. Thank it's you so many different ways to... Question. We had so many different ways to talk to this, like the wizard knows comprehend languages. <laughs> I know, you, you, this, this quest had two options unless you didn't have someone with Sylvan, and then it basically has one yeah, option. I, it's, I think Eris is the only one in the party that knows Sylvan. But you have a wizard with comprehend languages as well. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and I think there's, a, there's an elixir of comprehend, but the alchemist doesn't have it. I, f I think clerics might be able to prepare comprehend languages too. Druids have speak with plants, but not in my that level. <laughs> that would have worked. Speak with plants would have let you talk to them too. I think that's yeah. a very powerful, like, yeah. spell. Yeah. Um, yeah the point is, there's a few yeah. there's a few people that would have enabled the alternate path, but... We didn't bring a party that enabled that, though. Yeah. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with yeah. that. And for all you know, what he said was, Fuck you, I'm gonna kill you no matter what. <laughs> I mean, you don't know what he said. Yeah. It might have not. It I, might I think not he even said, be. Yeah, "There's no such thing as gold dragons." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes communicate. Being able to talk to the monster doesn't help all the time. Sometimes the monster is just like, oh, "I'm gonna eat your bones." Yeah. It's like, all right, well, conversation over, I guess. Zara tried to speak to the vampire in its language, and we almost lost the quest for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, all, right. Okay. all right, Zara, you're you go. You're the first to act oh, boy. upon seeing this thing. Yeah. Um, Zara is going to move here, um, and I'll ready. I use two actions to ready, uh, ready to throw my um, my eclipse at him if he comes into range. Cool. All right. Yeah, Katai, yeah. He's gonna start moving forward. Let's see here. Just making sure I have my my stats correct. His movement is correct. Oh, he's he's even slower. This is a this is a slow boy. Oh, we got a slow chunker here. Slow chunker. So he double moves to here, and then he he like his huge wooden hands like reach up and. And, I mean, he's taller than the sawmill, like, easily. The sawmill's only 10 feet up. He's, like, 30 feet tall. Um, so he just... That triggers me. It does totally trigger you, yeah. Go Hashtag for it. Triggered. Wait, it triggers you? What? Yeah, it triggers you ready. Oh, okay. Wow, nice. If that hits. Uh, so the 21 actually misses. Ah, oh, darn. Ah, oh, well, bummer. Okay. Yeah, your, your eclipse flies over and it hits him. But it just deflects <laughs> off his like iron hard bark. And uh, Zara's like kind of like little wide eyed. As it returns to her. And then he he's gonna climb on up onto here, which isn't like much of a climb. Like he's taller than it, so he just kind of walks onto it. This one seems more resilient than the others. <laughs> All right, Regal, it's the big guy. Huh, Regal does what Regal does best and throws a bomb. He's like, you're a big motherfucking tree. I'm going to burn you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my I'm going to use my hero point on him. Okay. Oh, 
That's why we saved the baby let us good role playing and RNG making oh no. Still well, misses. He, he takes the splash damage still. He does. I assume. Yep. Alright, so that's uh four splash damage. Which mm, is okay. Cool. Very cool. Yep, so he ends up taking fourteen. He has the same fire vulnerability as the other ones. Okay. And so that's one action. Oh yeah, I forgot. Do you have <laughs> um, I will pull out a bomb and load it into my gun. Got it. Freya. I'm going to mark him as prey, light my arrows on fire, and throw them at him. All right. Would I mean, yeah, be more effective. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna... I just toss the arrow. Yeah, yeah. Now, my question is, this guy is humongous. Can Very I good. aim for a part that's like further away from me, you so I don't have minus can. two penalty? Thank you. You absolutely can. You can aim for his back branches. Yeah. Yeah. Arc the arrow up so it falls. <laughs> He's 30 feet tall anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I just you shoot up. Yeah. Yeah. His face. Yeah. B squared, B squared, C squared, there you go. Yeah, you can shoot up at him, you're good. Oh! oh nice. Boy, here we go. Fran and Dolgren are critting like mad. Yeah. yeah. Time for math. I had a crit. <laughs> that one hits. Damn, nice, Fran. If it has the penalty. Ooh! Yeah. His AC is 22. That's so 11 there. plus 8 is 19 times 2. 38. Plus, all right, I'm gonna do all the math now. Plus two, plus. All right, after all of the math. Oh my God, that's so much. There we go. Oh! Oh my god. You should stick an arrow in each of his eyes. Damn. <laughs> Is he even gonna get a turn? <laughs> right. I don't know if Dolgren has anything to say. <laughs> yeah. oh my god. DPS party. See, this is the thing, you don't have any healers, so if you actually get someone, like, you can't get <laughs> but, like, he's not gonna because it's just a DPS party and everyone With does With plenty of fire healers. damage output. This is when we have Dolgren and Freya in the same fucking party, yeah. Yeah, wow. I spent an action to regrip my axe. Okay, you are holding it with both hands now. And then I, I suddenly burst into a charge and move up in the slash system. Okay. Well, I think that's just enough for a hit. You do. You hit him. Oh, pretty low roll, though. Uh, 13, 13 slashing and 4... Okay. He does have vulnerability axes and ten additional yeah, fire was built for oh, this. The other one's dead. Oh! 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 <laughs> Zara, finish him. Looks like it's up to me. So I'm gonna get a hit off. I'm so tempted to run down here, grab the torch, and throw the torch at him. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it if you want. Yeah. It would do eleven damage. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, or I could flank him and get my sneak attack, but my weapon might not do enough damage to take him out. I think there is a size rule for flanking. I don't know if we can flank someone this big. Really? If I remember uh, correctly, I feel like I've read that. I'll look it up. Maybe wrong. He's though. pretty damn big. Here, flanking rules. Uh, there's nothing about the size. Okay. Yep. I don't know where I thought I remembered. Reading. If you're on opposite sides of it, it can only direct its attention like one yeah. way or another. It might, it might be an old edition. Yeah. Maybe. So, right. do I flank it and get two melee attacks, or do I try for the torch for a single big one? Hmm. Carve them up what's like your what's turkey. your proficiency with torches? Yeah, I, I assume it would be a simple weapon, right? Or would that be improvised? Yeah, it, it's going to be a train. Well, a simple weapon. Throwing a torch is weird. Basically, uh, you would you would make a trained 
ranged attack roll, but you'd have a minus two. Walk up and hit the thing. All right. Probably yeah. better to just yeah. Go. I have a you higher chance flanking, of hitting. Just walk up here, to so. it. Hit it twice. Yeah, flanking yeah. right here. Yep. All right. Uh, so swinging at it. Well, bam. Nice. Ha! That looks like good damage. Yeah. Porch would have done. You throw the eclipse and it, it kind of twirls its way up, cutting branches off and then plants itself in his face. And uh, on fire, with the eclipse embedded in the front of its face, the thing goes... Aah! And it, it like slowly tumbles to the, to the ground and collapses in like a heap. Yippee, we did it. And Zara's going to put like put like a foot on one of the roots and like lean into it, and uh, just, um, just gonna lean in and say, "Boa tela watengo." I want to bluff that I know Sylvan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't know you knew Sylvan. What the hell? He was cursing. Why didn't you tell us earlier? Because he was cursing up a storm at us. He wasn't gonna go uh, go down or go uh, go peacefully. If you knew Sylvan, why didn't, the, why didn't you tell us earlier? <laughs> he just glad the big thing's dead. He was pissed about something. Alright, well. So you guys, uh... The, the dwarves, like, come out now. And, uh... It's, like, nighttime. And Corvican comes out ahead of his his staff, um, and and walks up to you guys and says, "Wonderful, thank you very much." <sighs> he motions for his employees to go like start moving the triants. None of my employees had ever seen more than three of them at once. Many of these bodies share distinguishing characteristics with the ones that have attacked us in the past. And you even seem to have gotten the large one I've heard about. Based on that, I would have to assume that you've cleared out most, or maybe even all of the Treants that have been attacking our machines. As I said, we at this point we were pretty certain there weren't that many of them. And many of the attacks were conducted by the same Treants returning multiple times. I would take it as a personal courtesy if you'd be willing to spend one additional day here, just to be sure. Once the Treons set their sights on one of our machines, they attack relentlessly until it's destroyed. So if we can go a day without any Treons attacks, it would be safe to assume that you finished your job. Absolutely. Sounds Seems reasonable. reasonable. Another day of free room and board? Who can say no to that? Absolutely. Thank you again for a job well done. It's our pleasure to be of service. Alright. So you guys are going to kind of chill at the sawmill for a, for a second day. Um, you're given, like, modest sleeping quarters in, like, the working quarters. Basically, they give you a room at the sawmill that's, like, where the employees sleep, so it's got, like, bunks. But it is your own room. You're not going to have to share it with dwarves. <sighs> it's nice to have You'll a room have to share with... It with one dwarf. Nice to have a room without 12 other people in it. Yeah. So uh, there isn't really much to do here. If you guys want, we can easily time skip this. Um, suffice to say, throughout your second day at the sawmill, there are no attacks. And so, like, by the end of the day, uh, Corvican comes to, to let you know that they they've they they'll take this as proof that the job is done because again like the treants have a had a pretty clear game plan like once they attacked a machine they wouldn't stop attacking it till they succeeded so 24 hours with no treants pretty safe bet that you you did it if anyone you want to do any role playing at the sawmill before you leave you're welcome to you have a whole day to do it but I don't have any, like, 
events that are going to occur during this time. So it's up to you guys if you want to like do anything. Uh, Zara would uh, would mention uh, the concert that's coming up, seeing if any of them <laughs> have heard of it. Okay, yeah. Uh, when you bring the concert up, a couple of them like are like, "Oh, Eris? Yeah, I've I've heard of her." Well, and, uh, she's gonna be playing pretty soon. And one of the dwarves is like, "Where where have you heard of her from?" The dwarf stares into off into space and is like, "I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I just I just do. I just know of her." Well, her name yeah, is spreading fast. A little, a little quizzical, like, because <laughs> you have like the fucking Fey thing. Yeah. So they're just like, oh yeah, I've heard of her. For, oh, who told you? I don't know. I just, I just did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, so some of the dwarves are no Avaris. Are they planning to go to the concert? Uh. It looks like a couple of them are, but but overall, a lot of the staff are just like, ah, oh, we have a lot of work to do, so we don't really have time for that. I understand. A couple, thought I'd, couple of them might make it. Thought I'd make sure you, you at least know about it. Didn't know if you'd received word that being this far out from the from the center of the of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. All. Any, anybody else, Matt? Tolkien does not say a word to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck those guys. They were mean. Uh, Regal. <laughs> Uh, no, I've got nothing. Okay, what about Freya? Nah. You good? Okay. So the day comes to a close, and you, uh, you, you start to make your way back, like, late, like, early evening, like, sundown. You start to make your way back to the guild hall. <sighs> Alrighty. You guys are walking. And then you're there. I think that oh. went rather well. <laughs> wow. Wow, this wasn't so far after all. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't seem like anyone wanted to roleplay anything on the walk back, so... I try not to just leave you somewhere if you're not... It's, it's yeah. hard. I, it's hard because I don't want to jump ahead if someone wants to do something, but I also, like, don't want to just sit there. Like, <laughs> right. You know? yeah. So... Alright, so you return to the, the guild hall. 